The second day of the home season, normally a whole hum affair, but not this year. There's a bit of a theme to the second home game at City Field. See if you can guess. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Philadelphia Phillies Tuesday night baseball presented by Verizon. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets played the second game of their series against the Phillies. Mets won their home opener yesterday and today for the first time in 598 days. Matt Harvey returns to the City Field mound. You know, I'm trying to look at it th like a, in a different way. You know, you've read everything about Harvey. I'm so used to players like myself in my day having these peaks and valleys. And when you're riding a peak, you try to ride it as long as you can. When you're in the valley, you try to get out of it. Matt Harvey is not that person. Every once in a while, there's someone that comes along. It just has such a dynamic personality that all he sees are the stars, the rings, the gold medals, maybe eventually the World Series. And I'll tell you, I might be a little jealous, but I, could, I really appreciate it, too. Well, you can feel the electricity growing behind us. Consider this. Matt Harvey's made 37 Major League starts. In 20 of them, he's allowed one run or less. That's better than anybody's done in a hundred years in Major League Baseball. So if you're a hitter trying to go up against him, what do you do? Well, uh, you got to look fastball, and when you get a pitcher like this, what makes a great pitcher is great stuff. And not just a get-me-over curveball. It's the ability to throw a good hard curveball, an exceptional breaking ball. The secondary pitches are so critical to the great pitchers, the Seavers, the Carltons, the Don Suttons, you name them, uh, Bumgarner. So as a hitter's approach, I don't want to hit his breaking ball. I don't want to hit his changeup. I'm going to be looking for a fastball. I'm not going to let it pass. If it's in the strike zone, i got to swing. But he throws so doggone hard, and he has such great command. That's what separates the men from the boys, Gary. And it's the Philadelphia Phillies who will be trying to hit Harvey tonight. They've never beaten Harvey. Matt's 4-0 in five career starts against the Phillies. Mets try and make it two straight over Philadelphia. All the action coming your way tonight on SNY.
Verizon's most reliable 4G LTE network only from Verizon. By Geico, the number one insurer in the New York market. By Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, starring Kevin James in theaters April 17th. And by City, proud partner of the New York Mets. Get the City Field this Saturday for Fireworks Night following the Mets game against the Marlins at 710. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash fireworks. And speaking of which, the upcoming schedule brought to you by Verizon. One more with the Phillies tomorrow night, then four with the Marlins Thursday through Sunday. And after an off day Monday, the Braves are in for three. Ten-game homestand in all, and then the Mets stay in New York and go to Yankee Stadium for three games before their next trip to Miami. That begins two weeks from yesterday. That's a long way down the road. Meanwhile, Matt Harvey getting encouragement from his mound mates as he heads off for his first city field start in nearly 20 months. Harvey and the Mets face the Phillies. First pitch coming up. reigns supreme, declaring his status among the city's biggest stars. Then came a season lost, months of lonely rehab, home in the hearts of Mets fans. After a commanding first start in D.C., Matt Harvey returns to Gotham to reclaim his post atop the city field mound. And that moment has arrived. With the fans on their feet, Matt Harvey calmly leaping the foul line and heading toward his office. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Maybe 83 when Seaver came in from the bullpen at the Big Shea. But a standing ovation by the crowd when he came in. And they are still standing up. Here's the Phillies starting lineup that will face him. Ryan Sandberg has juggled things a little bit. Same starting eight, but he's got Odubel Herrera in the leadoff spot. And Freddie Galvis, who's been hot, hitting second. He's dropped Ben Revere down to eighth, and he's moved Cody Ashey, who's been swinging the bat well, up to sixth in the batting order, trying to get some more runs. The Phillies last in the league in runs scored through the first seven games, and now facing Matt Harvey well, tonight. Two seasons ago, like a supernova, came across this uh, baseball spectrum with that great 
ERA. The numbers were off the charts. The base on balls, the strikeouts. The only thing that wasn't great because he was playing with a sub 500 team was the record. But still, nine and five and pitched in the All Star game here at City Field. <laughs> okay. Dude, Bell Herrera looking confident as he gets ready to face Matt Harvey for the first time. And we'll take a look at your Metsy defense. That's my play behind Mr. Harvey tonight. Same outfield as usual. Gold glove in center. I keep repeating myself. I'm sure Juan doesn't the first mind. First time you said it tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wilmer Flores at short. We've got a set lineup here. Darno behind the plate yet again. You know, it, it, it says something, though, Keith, because the reason they left camp with only four people on the bench is that they feel they're not going to pinch it for anyone in this lineup, and this is going to be the everyday crew. The last time Matt Harvey pitched in this ballpark was his last start before going on the disabled list in 2013 against the Tigers in August of that season. Oh, Ooh. this is great. Fans ready for the dark night of Gotham. Blue night. We got the blue and orange and blue too. And Harvey's first pitch of the night is a fastball in for a strike, and we're underway. Well, they poured that one in, Ron. Gave me goosebumps, by the way. That was remarkable. 0 oh, 1 to Herrera, the rule 5 pick. 97 from Harvey, and he's quickly ahead 0 2. You know, he faced 23 batters in his first start against Washington. 20 first pitch strikes. He goes right after people. It's like you were talking about, Keith. you got to be ready to swing at the fastball. Absolutely, yeah. 98 from Matt, 1 and 2. Freddie Galvis on deck, and then Chase Utley. The Phillies shut out yesterday, 2.3 runs per game over their first seven. Fortunate to be 3 and 4 on the year. That ball right in front of them. Don't be surprised he gets the big hook. That's what he did to Taylor in Washington. Thank and you. And there it is, and Herrera flailing for the first down of the night. Excellent choice of words. Word, Gare. That is a flail. That is, uh, oops. I uh, can't get in the dugout fast enough. Just that big barrel chest coming right at you, pushing off. And that line he forms steps right on it as he delivers that pitch. Herrera is saying, I want to go back to Frisco. Freddie Galvis, the hottest hitter in the Philly lineup, three for three yesterday, takes a first pitch curveball for a strike. Galvis, 10 for his last 19. So he's been swinging it well. Switch hitter. Wants As to throw. David right in on the grass at third. Back to back hooks. And he gets that one over as well. And now it's 0 and 2. That curveball has become a bigger part of Matt's repertoire. Very good, Gary. Very perceptive. This is Silver Fox. Three pitches and Galvis is down. Back to back strikeouts for Harvey to start the night. That's some gas. This is down the middle. Thing that differentiates Harvey to me watch his right backside. Because he gets the angle, he lifts it so high. Most pitchers go straight or dip it. He goes, he ends up, it's higher. Then when he starts, that's very unusual. That's how he gets that angle. So now Chase Utley, just two for 22 to start the year. And Harvey misses a rare first pitch ball. Utley's had some success against Harvey, four for 13. Can you see what the miserable start he's off to? Two for 22. First contact. That'll go out of play, and it's one and one to up. Yeah, going back to last year, it's the longest homerless, homerless excuse me, uh, drought for Utley. For those of you in California, I'm sure you're very much aware of what I just said. 
175 at bats with no water for Utley. <laughs> Boy, this crowd is on fire, huh? 1-1 one, one for Matt. Mm. And he throws a slider for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. A change up. 89 mile an hour change up. I left the game, I was throwing an 89 mile an hour fastball. Whoa. In the air, down the right field line, hooking toward the corner, and it's out of here. Chase Utley, who's hit him there before, hits his first home run of the season and puts a dent in Matt Harvey's night. First run Harvey's given up this year. Utley homers, and the Phillies lead it one nothing. Well, this is a curveball that, Gary, you mentioned it. It's become more prevalent, and we'll do a pitch pitch sequence here. First comes after him, fastball away out of there, foul back. The good change up down and counters with that same curveball. He struck out Herrera, but Utley's no Herrera. Correct. Utley has the short swing, uh, down and in hitter. Here's Ryan Howard right here. He's off to another uh, terrible start himself. For Matt Harvey, that was the first home run he's given up since before the All Star break in 2013. 227 at bats without allowing a home run. The last one to take him deep was Buster Posey back on July the 8th of 2013. As as I was saying, as you look at the shift, with Matt more prevalent with the curveball against the left-handers, he cannot throw it down and in, Ron. He's got to throw that 12 to 6 on the outside corner. You get it over the middle and down and in, it threats into the wheelhouse of the left hand. Shows you how good these hitters are. Hour four for 24 to start the year. Four for 25. Harvey strikes out three in the opening inning, interrupted by Chase Utley's home run. And so the Mets will try and come from behind. Bottom of the first, one nothing Phil. Same unit that's been going out there every day. Curtis Granderson has not been getting hits, but has been getting on base out of that leadoff spot. The Mets, though, averaging just 3.1 <laughs> runs per game, 10th in the National League as they take on right-hander David Buchanan. Well, here's his Toyota numbers. Let's go places. You can see 6 and 8 record. 375 is not a bad ERA. Much more hits than innings pitched. Uh, when you face Buchanan, you're going to see all four pitches fastball, cutter, Curveball slider change. And you saw in his first start against the Red Sox, he got knocked around pretty hard. Gave up six runs and seven hits over three innings. Full shift against Granderson, and he takes a fastball for a strike. And Curtis has been going the other way, getting on, hasn't been hitting, but getting on base. Nine walks on the season. Those nine walks lead the major leagues. And he takes one the other way for a base hit. 
No, he said it uh, yesterday that if he keeps going the other way like that, it's going to have to take teams out of this shift. That's out of the strike zone. That ball goes out there and just kind of slaps it to left. Listen, don't forget that all of these shifts are off Curtis and Granderson from his entire career, but mostly from last year. Weighted heavily for last year. Certainly is a different hitter in spring training anyways to now. It's going to be interesting to see how long it takes teams to adjust if they do. Now, the, the first two series, they didn't overshift against Granderson, but the Phillies have done it in each of his at-bats. Washington and Atlanta saw him more in spring training. Good point. It, it will not take long. David Wright won for three yesterday. Hitting 321 on the early season and mm. takes low and outside. Good stop by Carlos Ruiz to prevent a wild pitch. The Phillies defense. Remember, folks, how the wind was blowing in opening day yesterday. Their outfield played very shallow. Not so today. More normal depth in the outfield. Flags are pretty much hanging limp right now. Granderson at first and right takes inside. 2 0. Buchanan throughout his career has had reverse splits, which is to say he's been more effective against left hand hitters than he has been against right hand hitters. Righty's for his career hitting 301 against him. And it's hit hard, a base hit for right. So the Mets with back to back hits to start the opening inning. Granderson stops at second. We'll take a quick look after that rip by David of the Phillies defense brought to you by Coors Light. Herrera the youngster the rookie in center field the veteran Sizemore in right well you've got Howard and Utley on the right side of the infield boy Freddie Galvez seems like he's been around for a long time he's finally getting a chance to play every day at short and Ruiz the veteran behind the plate so it's set up for Lucas Duda first and second and nobody out Lucas 0 for 4 yesterday well, hitting 320 to start the year and himself a uh, a foul tater in yesterday's game. He hit it up in the Pepsi porch, but about 10 feet foul. Way up in the Pepsi porch. That was a bomb. Okay, we'll get used to it, folks. Dark Knight and Mr. Met. Nothing oh. wrong with Batman. Michael Kadire, the cleanup hitter, waiting on deck. Chase Utley took Matt Harvey deep in the top of the first. Mets trying to respond right away. There's the change up. Change ups from Buchanan to get ahead one and two. He's got a little movement, so I think that's what fools Lucas too. See how it starts on the inside corner and then the drop. Well, any change up over the middle of the plate is uh, if you're hanging in there and waiting. It's a mistake. A pitcher's making a mistake. It's one to rip. And the curveball struck him out. So Buchanan, a couple of change ups, follows up with his curveball for the first out. I don't remember him having this good of a curveball. That had a nasty bite on it down and into Lucas. That's the pitch he was working on this spring, and he used it 11% of the time against the Red Sox in his first start. Unveiled it there to strike out Duda. <clears throat> now it's Kadir. Michael two for four yesterday, including a sun aided triple. Mets were just one for nine with runners in scoring position yesterday. Kadir one for six with runners in scoring position so far this year. Here, Utley looks like he's going to come in to speak to Buchanan because now maybe he's just going to. Check the grass there. He, he's not really holding on Granderson, and Buchanan hasn't been looking at Granderson at all. He's got that second base umpire right in his line of sight, yeah. doesn't he, Utley? Yep. The Dyer hits one toward the middle. Base hit. Granderson around third. Herrera's throw will be cut off, and the Mets immediately tie it. Third hit of the inning. Kadir drives in a run. It's 1 1. Kadir's fourth run driven into the season. And a little cutter. And when you throw a cutter, you can't throw it for a strike if it's flat like this. It's staying on the same elevation, the same plane. And when it's breaking away from you, folks, it's easy to make, it's easy to get a beat on it. 
Have you noticed that Mr. Kadire in RBI situations works the middle of the field? Yes. We saw that a lot during spring training. Well, we're going to struggle for him the first week, but he's starting to find it. We're getting away all that home run baloney that was so prevalent in the late mid to late 90s and early turn of the century. Here's Murphy with the go ahead run at second, and he takes a first pitch curveball for a strike. Daniel one for four yesterday, scored the first Met run and a two nothing win. Randerson Wright and Kadire with first inning hits to get the Mets even. And Murphy pops one up. Ashy along the line to grab it in foul ground for the second out. Well, Murph's off to a sluggish start. Remember, he had the hamstring pull and missed some time the last couple weeks of spring. Two, actually three weeks. So he'll get it going. Now it's Travis Darnell. Travis got off to a hot start, but old for his last eight. Did drive and run with a sack fly yesterday. Travis started with the Philadelphia Phillies before he was traded to Toronto and then on to the Mets. Traded for a couple of Cy Young Award winners first Roy Halladay, then R.A. Dickey. One foul out of play. That was a good pitch to hit. It was just a little too quick. This is a home run pitch on a tee. Not a strike. Just up and in enough. Just up. Ele elevated yeah. enough, Ronnie. Um, home run swing is right. That's when Travis gets himself in trouble. He's got to stay gap to gap. Compact swing, line drives into both gaps. That's when he's at his best. Right at second, Kadire at first and two down. And Travis with a good cut at that fastball fouls it back going two. I like what Michael Kadire was saying earlier as Juan Lagares waits on deck in spring training. He was talking about listen, don't try to drive both people in. Don't try to hit a three run homer. Keep the line moving. Get a base hit. Work the middle of the field. Get the next guy in. But everybody wants to hit the home run right. today, you know? I get it. They all want to hit the bomb. And Buchanan's curve ball hit right to Utley. They'll make the play to first, and that retires the side. Mets settle for one in the bottom of the first on Michael Kadire's RBI hit. Matt Harvey back to the mound when we come back. Streaming sports service. Watch every out of market game live on demand in true HD, real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. 
Visit MLB.tv for details. I haven't heard widgets since my microeconomic class freshman year at Yale. The widget. How many widgets can you produce <laughs> in a set period of time? And what is your utility while you do that? <laughs> Carlos Ruiz takes a strike from Matt Harvey as we start the second <laughs> inning. Were you a micromanager? <laughs> I am not a micromanager. I let you do what you want to do. <laughs> Chopper, middle of the diamond. Murphy on the backhand. Got the catcher running. Throws out Ruiz with no problem. One away. What you want to do if you're a pitcher is that you want to two things you want to release the ball in front of you and you want to release it from the same spot every single time that way the hitter doesn't get any clues a little more on top there Ron or at the angle I think it might be the angle it's a little late a little later in the first inning as it is in the second inning in that shot okay. but it tells you in front and from the same spot hitter won't pick up any clues well <clears throat> actually it's uh, called Western Union. It's a dead giveaway if you got a pitcher that has a certain release point for his fastball and a different for his secondary pitch. Oh my goodness. Cody Ashy the batter. Ashy had a couple of hits yesterday and swinging the bat very well in the early season. Eight for 15 over his last four games. And Harvey misses with a change up two and one. Brady Sizemore the on deck batter. Harvey struck out three in the opening inning, but Mixed amidst that was Utley's home run. So nice to have that ability. It's two and one. It's a fastball count, and you just rear back and fire it because it's hard for them to catch up with it. Two two. There you go. On the inside corner, got him looking at the fastball. That's four strikeouts among the first five outs for Matt Harvey. So well, that's your fortunate, Keith, is that you are supposed to throw this outside, but he holds on to it too long, ends up on the inside corner, surprises Ashy, surprises Darno, surprises Harvey, but not the umpire. That maybe, maybe that's a, an early workout. That's a lesson too. I think the two strike when you throw 96, 97, that inside corner fastball with two strikes, it's going to put a hurt on hitters. Here's Grady Sizemore, 0 for 4 yesterday, just 2 for 15 to start the year. Holding down the Ford in right field while Dominic Brown recovers from an Achilles injury. Probably see Jeff Francoeur playing right field tomorrow with the Mets starting a lefty. And Sizemore can't catch up, 1 and 1. We were talking about this earlier. Most starts with no run or one run allowed. And you got to go back to 1917 and Ferdy Shup to find somebody with that many low run starts this early in their career. Now, the only difference uh, in, in Dwight's behalf is he was seven years young. And he was throwing eight or nine innings rather than six or seven. Yes, he was. And George McClellan will have good stuff. I faced him a few times. The general. One, two. In the dirt. Two and two to Sizemore. Hmm. Matt threw 91 pitches in six innings in his first start. He said his goal was if I'm going to throw a 90, I at least need to get through seven. Hmm. Two, two. Sizemore goes down swinging on the high hard one. Five strikeouts in the first two innings for Matt Harvey. Harvey stalks off in a 1 1 game.
Juan Lagares leads off the home second for New York. Juan went one for three, drove on a run, had a stolen base yesterday. And he hits one hard, but just now. Hanging curve from Buchanan, one and one. All right, folks, now we brought it back. Popular demand, Gary. Time now for the Verizon trivia question. If oh, you no. think you can stump Gary, that's Gary Cohen, your one and only. Tweet at SNYTV with a trivia question and the answer. With a base hit by Lagaris. And the tweet the and the tweet the question and the answer, folks, with the hashtag stump Gary. And there we go. We're lined up the middle. And that might get Lagaris going here. Let's hope that uh, you met fans. I know you're hopeful. Everybody getting off to a little bit of a sluggish start for the Metsies. Four hits among the first seven batters for the Mets tonight. Now one more Sorry, four. Guys. I don't know. I thought I thought I'd do a little play by play. You're doing fine. I didn't want to interrupt you. Flores drops down the bunt, but it goes foul. Actually, was playing behind the bag at third, so Wilmer thought he'd try to bunt for a hit. Nice choice. I didn't mind that choice. People say, well, the pitcher's up next. What's wrong with that? Base hit. Harvey bunts him over. Guys playing back, take advantage of it. And I like this. If you bunt for a base hit, it's either a base hit or it's foul. Don't ever bunt that thing back to the pitcher. Well, you can see shaded to the opposite field, pretty much straight up on the infield. And not thinking he's going to try to drag bunt a second time. Is that a drag bunt? Well, no, it's not technically. <laughs> Curveball for a strike coming too. We've seen a lot of breaking balls from Buchanan in the dirt so far and just an inning plus of work. So I think Lagaris got to be awake on the two strikes looking for a ball that could get away from Ortiz enough for him to take a base. Slash foul but that last curve ball was up and as a pitcher if you're bouncing your curve can you get in a dangerous spot where you over adjust and hang it. Yeah absolutely I, I think though there he was trying to throw it for a strike but uh, you have to remember righty on righty you throw that little slow curve ball. Uh, it's usually a two run bomb. See, I just don't understand throwing away after Flores had a very, very uh, defensive swing just to cover the outside corner. If I saw that on a fastball, the way I'd come in hard. Yes, absolutely, Ron. Maybe they remember Wilmer's grand slam against them last year. There you go. Was that six RBI game? Oh no, it wasn't. He hit that off Philippe Armand, I think. In Philadelphia. Yeah. That was that uh, that five game series that the Mets and the Keith played. left after the first. Uh, I had the first game. It went nine. Well, did it go extra innings? The used to game? be a better team player in the 80s. By there, the way. Were, there were several extra inning games during that. Oh, I know. I was really feeling for you guys. <laughs> yeah, <I> bet. <laughs> Sitting on your veranda, <laughs> drinking your mid julep or whatever. <laughs> I think a piece of key lime pie. <laughs> nice block. A snap throw by Ruiz, but Lagares was alert. The exterior of the oh, stadium. Uh, oh, there's our, a truck. That's our truck. Those are that's where the crew is, folks. What did you, you call it one time in Jupiter? Uh, well, <laughs> there it goes oh. and. Flores gets nailed, and wow, that hurt. Holding his hand. Mm. Let's hope not. He's got that little wrap on that left wrist. Boy, it sounded like it got the knob of the bat. No, it no, did it not. The back of the hand. At the back of the hand. All you can do is hope mm. in this circumstance because there's so many bones in the hand. Ball's traveling at 90 miles an hour. And, and Keith, the, when you get hit on the hand like that, that really sounded terrible. When you get hit on the hand like that, you have the bat there. Does it make it worse than that it jams your hand into the bat? Uh, if it's the back of your hand, you're better off. If it's your fingers, not good. 
If it's your wrist, Gary, where your ulna, your, your wrist joint, that's the worst place to get hit. Boy, fans love this. Well, it'll stay in to run. And we'll see if it swells up between innings. It's also his throwing hand. Right. Fans, fans love that here. You get waffled and you get down there. So for the second straight inning, the Mets have the first two men on and they'll look for the bunt. Not very aggressively in. I know it's first and second. And Harvey pops it up and Ruiz makes the grab. So Matt unable to get the bunt down. And this is uh, Matt's first start. He had trouble putting him yeah, down. In fact, yeah, he struck out, in fact, I believe. Same situation, first and second. Yeah. Well, his bat's moving. His, his position's fine. Watch the bat, though. See how it drops? You can't drop it like that. It's called stabbing, correct? Yeah, you don't stab at the ball. You catch the ball with the bat. Taught that by the great Buddy Harrelson. What you have to do when the ball goes down, you move your body down with the bat. Close. You know what I'm saying? Instead, instead of stabbing down at it, you move your body down. So you have, when 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 the ball comes in, you have you're out there for the bunt. And when the bunt goes down, you lower your legs so that way you somehow can get down to that ball without changing the bat angle. Again, Galvis runs for the bag. Now moves away. And Granderson takes inside ball one. Granderson had an opposite field base hit his first time up, and part of it's because there's a runner at second base, but. Interesting that the Phillies are not shifting against Curtis this time. And well, Buchanan keeping it inside. Buchanan is playing with fire here. Second inning in a row here. He's been in trouble and fallen behind in the count. And he is flirting with uh, danger. Well, he gave up seven hits in three innings in his first start. He's already given up four hits in an inning and a third in this game. Behind 2 and 0, oh, and Granderson takes it high, and now it's 3 and 0. Oh. He's got a Molly Hatchet working, Keith. Flirting with disaster? Yes. 2 0 changeup, you know, it's a, from a hitter's perspective, if it's a good changeup, you can take it 2 and 0. Oh. Does he hit 3 and 0 oh here? He loves to swing. But takes a strike. 3 and 1. Curtis is going to break out in a big way today. Hitting his first at bat. Can feel it. That's trying to get Matt Harvey a lead here in the second. Two on, one out, three one to Granderson, and again, spending way, way too much time on the runner on second base. It's three one on the hitter. Ken is not good enough to uh, uh, fool around with the hitter, uh, with the runner. Concentrate on the hitter. Little dribbler. Who's going to get it? Ruiz. And he oh. can't make the play. And the bases are loaded. Wow. Well, that's a play we've seen Chooch make many times, but not that time. Well, he used his bare hand, and he didn't have a whole lot of time here because Granderson always hustling up the line. Last time I saw, sorry, Keith, last time I saw Chooch make this play. It was on a no hitter by Holiday in the postseason, and he came up with it. He couldn't hear. Just. It'll be scored a base hit for Granderson. He's two for two, and the Mets have the bases loaded for David Wright. David hitting the two hole here. It's perfect. Set up nice for him. He hasn't had a lot of RBI opportunities in that two spot. In fact, Terry was asked about that today. If he wasn't getting a lot of chances in that two spot, would he move things around? Well, has a big chance here. Fortunate. It should be actually second and third, two outs. A couple of hits sandwiched around a hit batsman. One and out to right. And the curveball is down. And now Buchanan in a world of trouble. He's in deep, deep. He's pitching backwards. The pitch is out of the strike zone early. Means he's got to come to the hitter's leg. With his doodle looming on deck. 
David's last grand slam came nine years ago. Pitch to hit there and foul the back. Fastball up. And I think you got to pitch David up to get that uppercut swing. Down he can he'll drive it. It's that big long swing. It tends to get long upstairs. That's too high. And now it's three and one. Change up two one again. Lagaris at third. Flores at second. Granderson at first. One out. Right pulled the base hit to left field his first time up. Hit the other way foul. Three and two. It's one of those games where one of the pitchers has a quiver full of arrows and the other pitcher less so. Slick shot. Yeah, one's hitting the target, the other one's missing the whole bullseye, not even close. Falling behind, you're gonna get in big trouble. Now a full count to right. Fastball, still three and two. Well, he's put himself in this position, Gary, to have to throw the fastball, and David's sitting right on it because he he threw a one and zero curveball and a and a two and one changeup. What else is he going to do now with the with the with the bases loaded? You got to come with the cheddar. The way to get an out though is in. Try to jam David and try to get a ground ball, not away. And the foul ball. See that though, guys. He's got a little bit of cutting action on his fastball. So, as a hitter, you identify that ball down the middle, and it just makes a little movement towards the outside at the end. And Buchanan's throwing harder than he did in his first start against the Red Sox. He averaged just 89 on his fastball, 88 on his cutter, but he's throwing that cutter 91. I used to throw harder with the bases loaded too. <laughs> it's only a game. <laughs> This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat to David Wright. Oh, fought off away that change. Fought off a tough one. They're not a strike, but tough one to lay off. Change up. Pretty good movement on that pitch. To the cock of the bat and just kind of dropping his hands on that change up down. 25 year old David Buchanan trying to pitch himself out of a mess in quite a battle with David Wright. Little flare on the right side, and that's the second out. Yep, good call, Ronnie, and he got him in. And it didn't want to come in. It's so one thing I've seen Chooch enough over the years, and this goes back to as a hitter to know your catchers. Chooch does not like to call inside, he predominantly calls away. And they went inside and got David finally. Finally came inside, Ron. Well, semi luck because that pitch was supposed to be away. Yes. So Buchanan able to get a huge out as he retires David on the little pop up, and now it's left to Lucas Duda with the bases loaded and two out. Lucas struck out his first time up, and he's just one for ten now in his career against Buchanan, who, as we mentioned, has better fortune against lefties than against righties. Ball ripped down the line. Fair ball. Lagaris is in. Flores right behind him. Granderson digging around third. Granderson heads for the plate and he will score. A three run double for Lucas Duda. Four to one, New York. First ball hitting right here, and it's a up hanging slider. I guarantee you, last year Lucas would have taken that early in the season. His team is hitting far more aggressively on first pitches. That gets a hanging cutter, and that's RBI three, four, and five on the year for Lucas. Isn't as Bob McClure comes out to talk to his starting pitcher? But isn't that the greatest thing about offense? At some point, with two outs, you can pick up a teammate. 
nothing better than that. When you don't come through, the guy behind you picks you up. So Duda cashes in three with his second double of the year. And the Mets have gotten some runs for Matt Harvey to work with here at City Field, something that has not always been the case. Matt's pitched brilliantly in this ballpark during his career, but the Mets have averaged just three runs per game when he's pitched here. They've already got four. Michael Kadire drove in the first Met run with a base hit in the first. And he takes one inside, and he is hit by the pitch. Wow. Flores got hit on the hand earlier in the inning, and now Kadire gets drilled. And I don't think this is intentional. This young man is all over the place. He's flustered. He's flustered. They want to come inside. Got him on that left hand. I don't like this sign. I know it hurts. That ball will bite you, folks. Let me tell you. I don't like the sign because he, he kind of looked down like that's not right. Yep. And Terry Collins is gesturing to the dugout. It looks like Kadir is coming out of the game. They're going to x ray that pronto and get some ice on it. This is going to be an interesting game the, uh, the, uh, the way going here because uh, number 33 is watching this also. So, new one heist is going to come on. Well, first Flores and now Kadire hit on the hand by David Buchanan pitches. Matt Harvey paying strict attention, and we'll see what happens from here. Now, that's not to say that there's any intent on the part of Buchanan, but at some point you got to protect your guys anyway. I don't care if there's any intent. This is the major leagues. At some point, know where the ball's going. You know, if you're pitching inside, know how to pitch inside. That's the first pitch of the at bat. Throw something on the corner or just off the corner. He called for a pitch down. He got away from him. So now Duda at second. Newen heights the pinch runner at first, and we'll get a report on Michael Kadire as soon as we can. Daniel Murphy, the batter, and he laces one the other way, but just foul. The Mets have been ringing this place with line drives so far in this ballgame. That's already three for eight with runners in scoring position. It's only the second inning. David Buchanan lasted just three innings in his first start against the Red Sox, in danger of another early exit. Or if he falls behind way too much, he may have to just suck up some innings for say the bullpen. One of those games, but he's earned every bit of this uh, thrashing here so far. Given up six hits and hit two batters. Murphy takes a fastball strike and it's one and two. Travis Darno would be next. That's got a run in the first. They have three home here in the second, driven in on a double by Lucas Duda. He fouled out his first time up just three for 23 to start the year. Brian Sandberg now in his second full year as Phillies manager. Thirty pitches this inning for Buchanan. And Murphy reaching across sends it toward the line. Revere right in their territory to make the catch. And the inning over. So Matt Harvey now has a lead to work with. Matt's given up a run, but he's struck out five over the first two innings. Now he's got a three run cushion to take back to the mound. Gentlemen.
tri-state Audi dealers and the uncompromised Audi A3 sedan. Get to City Field this Sunday when the Mets take on the Marlins at 110. The first 15,000 fans will receive a David Wright schedule poster courtesy of City. After the game, all kids 12 and under can run the bases in the Mr. Met Dash. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Ben Revere leads off against Matt Harvey. Kirk Neuenheis, who pinch ran for Michael Kadire, stays in in left field. Kadire had to leave after being hit on the hand by a David Buchanan pitch. And the curveball from Harvey. This is for ball one. Buchanan on deck, and then Odubel Herrera. Revere drops to the number eight hole today by Ryan Sandberg after going 0 for 4 yesterday. How many guys in the eighth hole had 184 hits a season ago? And Revere cracks one at a right for a base hit. And the eight hole green with him. And he has the Phillies' second hit of the day. Well, there's there's someone that turned on a fastball. The release point again in the first inning. Maybe that one on your right, Keith, on the left is a little south of the other one. More on top in the third inning. Crowd booing David Buchanan as he steps in after he hit two Met batters in the last half inning. That's looking for the bunt. And he obliges, but fouls one off. Now, I used to be able to field my position, but I also had some of the best fielders see Buchanan semi into it with Keith and Ray Knight and Hojo or whatever. I always thought, too, we're going to get at least the guy at second. Maybe we'll turn it over. Mm. You know, I've always wondered. Pitcher hits a couple of batters. He's so vulnerable in that bunting position. Would you ever get a pitcher who would buzz the guy who hit a couple of his teammates? You might want to do that. The the issue you have is the game is still at hand. You're trying to win this game. You only have a three run lead. You want to get through this. Hey, listen, they got Ben Revere on. If he gets over, you got you know Herrera and Galvis, Udley Howard. Take care of the game at hand. If you have a chance within the game when it gets out of control, then he can take care of stuff. Nice job by Buchanan getting down the bunt with two strikes. Duda makes the play. 3 4 on the sacrifice. I know what you're saying, though. I mean, your first thought is he hits your players, air him out. You air him out, then you got guys in first and second, and the game's not mm. in hand. Pitch the game first. And you certainly don't want to at some point. Matt to throw one in, knock someone down, and then he gets a warning so the rest of the game he can't throw a ball in because that's how the game works today because the umpires are in control. So here's Herrera who struck out leading off the game. Revere at second and one out. And Herrera takes a curveball for a strike. Home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez. Is really calling that borderline curve a strike at the knees. Yeah, he likes the ball down, Marquez. He called one close on Sizemore and right there on Herrera. Down the line over toward the corner. New and I's a long run, and he oh. makes a brilliant catch. Newenheis just into the game. Splendid backhand catch going to the corner for the second out. Wow. Well, Newenheis can play all three outfield positions. That's one of his bright spots, his value to this team. And this ball is slicing away from him, a long way to run, and just a very fine catch. Almost hyperextended his knee there when he went down. Watch his left knee, almost a hyperextension. Well, we saw Ben Revere for the Phillies make a great catch to Rob Granderson yesterday, and now Newenheis doing the same to Herrera. Runs as well as any big man in the game does Newenheis. So Revere remains a second with two out, and now Freddie Galvis has struck out his first time up. So the Phillies getting some good swings against Matt Harvey here in the third. And Galvis fouls one away. Be careful with that changeup. Galvis struck out his first time up. 
What the Phillies have done is they've loaded their lineup with left handed at bats. So you're not seeing that hard slider. You're seeing curve change fastball from that so far. Good point, Ron. Got him. And he's hit by the pitch. Just deflected off his arm. Mr. Galvis goes to first. Very well done by Marquez, not calling a warning here. He's coming inside. The catcher set up inside. Let's not get carried away. It's baseball. Did that actually get him? Just uh, yeah. Just, I mean, it's close. I don't know. On our slow mo, it didn't seem to. This is a play you can challenge. I would have to say, when I first saw it, I thought it deflected a little bit to get in the glove of Gar Darno. I don't know. There's a gray part. Don't think the red part. Look at the gray part. Well, Terry Collins waiting for his video coordinator on the phone with Bob Garrett. Darno is going out to the mound to kill some time to give the video guys a little more of an opportunity to look at it and make a decision whether to challenge. It's uncertain. The umpire here has to be very diligent. And, and here not comes Terry. I understand what he's doing here. I still think, I don't care how many times I see it, that it's uncertain. And the well, call was hit by pitch. You know, it's interesting because live, I thought I heard sound yeah. that would indicate he was hit by a pitch. Let's listen to what it sounded like as the umpires go off to review it. It's a double hit. So the sound would seem to indicate that he was hit, but the video that we saw is a lot more uncertain. And uncertain means that they're going to stick with the call. And it does not appear as though Terry has challenged. He's asking the umpires to review this on their own. That's why they have not gone to review it yet. Uh, so the play is not yet under review. He is asking the umpires to review it. On their own. I disagree with this. You yeah. got to take a gamble. You you lose your you lose your challenge. Your home, your home plate umpire made the call. Just stand. This was not in the pace of game against initiatives, was it? So the crew, which is led by Tom Hallian, who's the third base umpire today, deciding whether it's appropriate for the umpires to initiate a review. And they go. If I'm Sandberg, I'm hot. You can't tell from there. The ball's moving so quickly. I'll tell you, I do not see a hit by pitch there. It sounded like a hit by pitch, but it's hard to see it. Now, Tom Hallie is trying to explain to Ryan Sandberg why the umpires are initiating a review without the Mets challenging, and that appears to be what's happened. So the umpires are reviewing this. Right. Okay. Listen, folks. It's a double hit. So it, that's the way it sounds, right? In the history of the game, it's a double hit. And I'm sure that's what Alfonso Marquez went by when he decided that it was a hit by pitch. See, what you what you don't see in this angle right here in his freeze frame is where the ball is. And, and it's and already past his arm. It's also his shirt moves back to his body, the gray part of his shirt. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the review umpires in the bunker in New York. Decide. Play under review brought to you by Mazda. So, as far as we can tell, this is not a manager's challenge. This is a crew chief review, which is under the umpire's discretion at any time. Keep staying with the gray part of his uniform as keep going. The top part of it moved back. That's open there. Yeah, that's open. We don't know if that ball's by him yet. Correct. We don't know it. Correct. That could be three inches before. You, you can't overturn this. This is this is. Well, it's a three run Met lead if Galvis is hit by a pitch then Utley who homered his first time up would come to bat as the tying run. Yeah, and guess what Harvey's out there. and He's got to wait for five minutes. This is this is that baloney. Is, it's right there that you can't tell right where the ball is in front of the red. Once it goes to the side of the red, clearly it didn't hit him after that. But did it get him before that? That you can't 
necessarily tell. This is shades of Mike Torres in the Red Sox uniform with Bucky Dent at the plate. Remember the delay when he fouled the and ball off his foot and broke his back. And first he hadn't he didn't take any warm ups. Next pitch bomb. Harvey's taking warm ups. All All right. Right. Let's see. There's no indication yet, but he's talking to Ryan Sandberg, and that makes me think it's going to go against the Phillies. No, maybe not. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, the first right. base, so Thank they're you. not overturning the call. Thank you. I mean, we saw the replay, and I know you folks at home say it didn't hit him. I've uh, been playing this game for a long time. A double hit is a double hit. You hear it, and you know what it is. I. What is happening now? It's going to explain it to Terry. Explain to Terry. Tom Howe is the crew chief. Why don't we get some chairs out here and get a classroom down there and a blackboard? Jeez. I just don't feel, Gary, that a manager should be able to have a try to tell the umpires. The umpires, the play should stand. The home plate umpire is there. It's a close play. The third base and first base, the second base umpire are not close enough to hear anything. It's a home plate umpire's call. It stands. But, would, it, but it is within the rules. I understand. I, it is within the rules. Umpires review. But I will say, you know why uh, Terry challenged it. He's challenged it because he wants Galvis to hit with two outs and not Utley. The problem is, is by doing this, he has put Harvey on the mound for seven minutes while Utley is here waiting to hit, you know, waiting to hit the ball hard. That's not a good move, personally. Three minutes and 53 seconds officially on the review, and it is not a manager's challenge. So Terry still has that in his pocket. It was officially a, a crew chief review. So Utley homered into the right field corner in the first inning comes to bat as the tying run in a four to one game. Revere at second with great speed. Galvis at first who runs well is at first. Utley's home run was his first of the year and his first in 176 at bats. And he takes one the other way for a base hit. Revere to third. He's being waved home. Neuenheis's throw to the plate is up the line and the Phillies get a run. Not a good throw by Neuenheis. Utley drives in his second run of the game and now it's four to two. Tell you what. Good hitting, fastball away. Look at that nice short stroke, compact swing. Newen Heist just coming in nicely, but the throws offline. Tell you what, it's a whole different inning if Newen Heist does not make that play in uh, down the left field line earlier. You still think your pitcher knows to spite your face. You wanted to face Galvis. I understand that, but your less, best pitcher in the National League East sit out there for five minutes. Now it's Ryan Howard, and he goes after the first pitch fastball and fouls it off. Howard struck out his first time up. So Chase Utley, a big thorn in Matt Harvey's side tonight. A home run in the first inning, an RBI single here in the third. And now the tying runs on base for Howard. There's that inside corner fastball. I love it when you're throwing gas like he does. Harvey. That's a charade. Harvey could have went in the bench and toweled off. That has struck out five. Six. Side retire. Phillies get a run after the Mets failed to get an overturned call. Four to two Mets in the third.
firing crew between innings maybe just getting a clarification of what happened when the Mets asked for a, an umpire review they conceded to do the review but did not overturn the call and it ended up costing the Mets a run you I did not see any conclusive evidence to overturn that call. So, so you're, in, you're in cahoots with the guys at the bunker. Met fans don't get mad at me. <laughs> Here's Travis Darno, who grounded out his first time up, facing David Buchanan, who's had a very rough go of it his first five innings of the season. Three innings against Boston, gave up six runs and seven hits, two innings in this game, four runs and six hits. Darno, Lagares, and Flores trying to continue the onslaught here in the third. Mm. Ball and a strike to Darno. Well, not only did Harvey have to stand around during that review, Buchanan had extra time in the dugout. See if that serves him well or not. You know, Ronnie was in, bringing up an interesting point between innings that Terry asked for that review without asking Darno what he thought. Right, because Darno's closest to the play. Wouldn't you consult with your catcher, or maybe he did get a nod from him? I don't know. But still, it's within the rules. Uh, why not try to right. get it overturned? Didn't cost him a challenge. Right, exactly. But the other point is that it made Harvey stand around. That's was Ronnie's yes. other point. So down to third, Ashy ranging line throws out Darno one away. Let's check in with Steve Gelb, Steve. Gary here with Dr. Stacy Rosen. She heads up the Cats Institute for Women's Health at North Shore LIJ. Received a nice check from the Mets earlier today. Stacy, why is the Cats Institute so important? It's important because women's health is important to all of us. Women's health needs are unique and they need to take care of themselves and it shouldn't be so hard. What's the best way for women who are interested to find you? You can find us at our website, NorthShoreLIJ.com backslash KIWH for Cats Institute for Women's Health. There's a lot of good information. That's what you were saying before. Absolutely. There's great newsletters, invitations to outpatient programs, as well as the ability to navigate through our amazing health services. All right, Stacey. Well, we appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. Thank you, Steve. Juan Lagares at the plate, and he swings past the cutter of Buchanan one on one. Lagares got the third inning started for the Mets with a base hit up the middle. That scored three runs in that second. Philly's got one back in the third. Garris getting a steady diet of slow stuff, isn't he, Keith? Especially down. A lot of wrinkles. Yep. Then fastballs up out of the strike zone. So he's chasing a bit more than a tad. One, two. Hit sharply, but right at Utley. And quickly there are two outs. So Buchanan, who really badly needs a quick inning, has the first two, and he'll face the number eight hitter, Wilmer Flores. Flores got drilled on the right hand by a pitch his first time up. He was able to stay in the game. Michael Kadir not as fortunate. He got hit on the left hand later in the inning and had to leave the game. And Flores pops one up. And Buchanan's got himself the easy inning he needed. Mets are out one, two, three in the bottom of the third. Matt Harvey back to the mound for the fourth, leading four to two.
It's dugout. He got on the phone. I'm not sure to whom. Maybe to the press box. And uh, then he was in deep discussion with Mets bench coach Bob Guerin. So uh, not sure what uh, that is all about. I, I think go. I think there were a few tweets that were wrong, Gary, and he wanted to make sure he got it out there in the <laughs> tweet sphere. Carlos Ruiz has to duck back on an up and in fastball from Matt Harvey. Ruiz grounded out his first time up. So let me ask you this according to the code right two of Harvey's guys got hit. Yeah. He may or may not have hit Galvis with a pitch. Are we done. No what, what I would do uh, within the framework of the game. And I'm talking about the game now it's 4 2 Gary what are you trying to do you're trying to win the game first then take care of uh, whatever revenges you might have in the game. But if you get a little later in this game and there's two outs and there's a star for the Phillies up I'd have no problem airing them out. With two outs no one on base. Ruiz hits one on the ground to Flores. And makes quick work of him one away. By the way we just got a medical report on Michael Kadire. Good news. X-rays were negative. They are calling it a contusion of his left hand. So that contusion means a bruise. Right. But the X-ray is negative and that's ice. That's positive especially with all those little bones in your hand yeah. that can break in those situations. So now Cody Ashey who took a call third strike his first time up. Doing this split screen on the release point from the first inning to the fourth inning. That looks about the same to tell you the truth. And I like that. And he's throwing all of his pitches from the same point. Fastball, curveball, slider change. Although we haven't seen any sliders, I believe, yet today. Behind the count on Ashy, 2 0. With Grady Sizemore waiting on deck. And a high fly ball deep to right. Granderson takes a look, and that ball's out of here. Cody Ashy hits his first home run of the year, the Phillies' second home run of the night. And now the Met lead is a skinny run at four to three. Well, and Matt Harvey looking rather human tonight. Human after all. That's what happens when you stop the game in the middle of the freaking game. Matt had not allowed a home run in 61 innings, 227 at bats before he gave up the home run to Utley in the first. Well, let's see. This is a fastball. Didn't get it in enough. Boy, he just turned on it. Beautiful head down, short swing. Ball goes a long way. And now 12 batters later, Ashy takes one deep. You know it. She's got a quick stroke this year, a little more like ugly, ugly yep. than he's had in the past. It's interesting, isn't it? He does look like ugly. Sizemore struck out his first time up. He fouls one away. That's Ashy's first extra base hit of the season. It's only the second time in Harvey's career he's given up two home runs in a game. His third career start back in August of 2012, he gave up two home runs against the Padres. A rare event. One and two to size more. So Harvey needs to find his rhythm again, RJ. Uh, had that delay, went back in the dugout. So he's trying to find it again. Was that his first slider of the game? I think so, yeah. And that, that tells you that he's just trying something different. Mm -hmm. He's back to the fastball, 98 miles an hour, but up and in, and now it's a full count to Sizemore. He's starting to lay off that ball up in the zone, also. Hitters make adjustments in the game, also. Full count to Sizemore, and he bounces wide along the line and just foul. So Harvey who began this night with back to back strikeouts.
stunned by a first inning home run by Utley. Short circuited by the long delay while the Mets tried to overturn a call on the last inning. And now finds himself struggling to maintain a lead. Struck out Sizemore for the second out. That's seven now for Harvey. Utley on the left, Ashy on your right. Both bombs. A breaking ball over the middle. You see the circle on the ball on the left. That's a slider. And the swings are all very similar, although Ashy has a longer follow through. Let's go with the one hand where Utley has always had that like hockey swing follow through. Here's Ben Revere, who singled and scored a run in the third inning. And you notice both pitches, Ronnie, were, were down and inner half right where the lefties love it. They do love it. I spent many a day rubbing up a new one after throwing a pitch exactly that place. So the Phillies who heard all week about how they would be the opposition for Matt Harvey's first city field start making some noise tonight. There you go. It's always like that pitch that pushes hitters off the plate. Two and one to Revere. And the curve ball stays high. Three and one. The other thing we tend to forget because we're so Met centric is that the other guys on the other team thinking they want to take the dark night down. I mean that's a big thing for them. Murphy slides over to his right and throws out Revere to end the inning, but the Phillies get closer. Second home run of the night against Matt Harvey off the bat of Cody Ashe makes it 4 3 Mets in the fourth. Matt Harvey leads off the home fourth inning. Matt struck out trying to bunch his first time up. Now all for his last 27. Dating back to 2013. Remember he got off to a great start with the bat. In fact. Uh, before this 0 for 27 streak began. Matt was. Hitting well over 200. For his career, but this time he takes a call third strike and a curveball from David Buchanan and strikes out for the second time today. During tonight's game, you can get interactive with SNY Game Day on SNY.tv featuring pitch by pitch coverage, player cards, and in depth stats. Check out SNY Game Day on SNY.tv, your online home of all things New York sports. 
Here's Granderson, who's two for two. Single to left and dribbled an infield hit. And he scored two runs. So Granderson, who began the day with one hit for the season, has two in his first two at bats. Popped up a long run for the only infielder over there. And not able to make the play is Galvis. I just don't think you had to slide there. When you slide, your head starts bobbing. You're, I know you're close. It's the big leagues. You got to make that play. Not an easy one, but you got to make it. Never touch leather. Got him on Hit the bare hand. Yeah. That hurts. Huh? Something with people's hands in this game. Hitters, fielders. Just making a fist there, trying to shake it off. Now Granderson back in pulls one into the shift. And Utley makes the play to throw him out two away. So my feeling is this Gary if you're going to play the shift and Ronnie you correct me. Remember the old adage pitch him away play him away. Yeah. Well if you're going to put a shift on Granderson pitch him in and play and put the shift on pitch him in or change up kind of down any change up you're going to pull that hits it into the shift. So don't have David Wright bats. With two out and nobody on, and Buchanan, who started this game so shakily, has fallen into a nice groove now, retiring six in a row as his team has fought back. David flies one out to right center field, but Sizemore has it measured. And that retires the side. So Buchanan is settled in to retire seven in a row, and Matt Harvey takes the mound with a one run lead as we go to the fifth at City Field. The viewers are able to stump you, Gary. You're up. What's the question? Matt Harvey is the 29th meant to wear number 33. Who was the first? Primero. I have no earthly idea. Do you? No. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for playing. I can guess. Oh, look at the city. That's beautiful. The red and purple Empire State Building. Uh -huh. well, David Buchanan, who didn't look like he was going to be long for this game, gets a second plate appearance. He sacrifices first time up. Well, I've got news for you about the whole challenge thing. And the uh, what we thought was an umpire's review. We have finally gotten an explanation, and this is why Tom Hallian was on the phone a couple of inning breaks ago. It turns out that when Terry Collins came out, remember the Mets waited a, a yes. substantial period of time before Terry came out? The umpires ruled that the Mets were not entitled to challenge. 
because Matt Harvey had already gotten back up on the rubber to throw the next pitch before Terry came out and that's what all the conversation was about. He went to the umpires asked to challenge the umpires got on the horn as this one's hit down the line and Buchanan's got himself an extra base hit. He's got some pretty good speed as he gets to second base. And Buchanan just his fourth big league hit and he's in scoring position with nobody out. Little slap. That's all it was. Ball belt high up, outer half, just slapped it to right. I gotta believe you bunt here. So the bottom line is that the Mets, it was not the Mets asking for the umpires to review, it was the Mets asking to challenge, and the umpires apparently talked to the folks in the uh, the bunker and were told that the Mets were not entitled to challenge because they waited too long. See, Harvey's got to get on the program. Can you imagine being on the rubber ready to pitch to the next one? And Herrera gets flipped. He's hit by a pitch. No, no foul, foul ball. ball. They say foul ball. And now Ryan Sandberg is going to. And now Bo is on the first. Larry Bo on the phone to talk to their video guy to see whether they should challenge this call. Yep, definitely yeah, easy to see. Yep. So it's getting a little dicey here, a little hairy. Whoa. You can get a taste of how quick that is, huh? Wow. Good shot, guys. So, Herrera after getting flipped and having it cost him a strike. We'll get back in the batter's box after getting a little tighter grip on his bat. Tighter grip the bunt. Buchanan is the tying run. He's on second with nobody out. Herrera was robbed of an extra base hit by Neuenheis' last time up. Great catch going toward the left field corner. And he's set to swing Ooh. and fouls back the second strike. Beautiful crowd. You think Matt Harvey have anything that had anything to do with this? <laughs> well, he had everything to do with it, but <laughs> he's making the big crowd a little nervous. Only if you're a Dark Knight fan, too. I was actually Flash Gordon. 70th pitch coming up for Matt. He's probably on a 95 pitch tether today. Maybe 100 at the outside. This is situational hitting right here. A lot to ask for a young hitter. Might know the, the rookie here to at least advance the runner. Pretty much straight up on the infield, shading to the out, right in the outfield, the opposite field, excuse me. Trying to put away Herrera. What a good little stroke, though, I'll tell you. Tonight's game changer brought to you by T Mobile. Comparison with some of the Met pitching stars of the past, first 37 appearances. And when Jerry Kuzman had a lower ERA. RJ, you made the hit parade. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> what was I doing on that? Herrera hits one out to right center. A long run back in the gap. And Lagaris gets there, but Buchanan able to tag and go to third. So a quality at bat for Odubel Herrera. And now the Phillies of the tying run at third and one out. Nice at bat for by Herrera here. Look at Lagaris. I mean, it's a Del Monte with him, and it, most center fielders are going to make this play. But I just love to watch him run after a ball. So terrific at bat by the young rookie, advancing the runner. So now the Mets bring the infield in with a tying run at third and one. I remember it's the pitcher running, but Buchanan has certainly shown that he's got some pretty good wheels. Yalvis at the plate. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. That was the one that sparked all the delay, and what turned out to be a belated challenge by the Mets. 
It was late, but it was a lot later by the time they figured out it was late. Interesting. I would move the infield back a little bit up the middle infielders. And Galvis late on the fastball, one and one. You could move the infielders a little back because Buchanan, the pitcher, you know, he's not on the base that often, although he has a very good speed, as we saw. I would move the outfielders in a little bit. Look, Garris is in enough. Yeah, Neuenheis needs to be further in in the opposite field. Chase Utley on deck. And he's bunting, pops it up, Darno back, and he makes the grab. It was not a suicide squeeze. Buchanan was not coming. But Galvis tried to lay one down, and he fouls out for the second out. Well, if this was a safety squeeze, it's not a smart play. I can't believe that Ryan Sandberg would put this a bun on here. It's not a smart play because the pitcher who's rarely on the bases is at third base. All that inexperience. To let you hit the baseball, swing the bat. Would you pitch to Utley here and pitch to Howard? Absolutely I would, not pitch to Utley. I would. I agree 100%. And would you ever have thought we'd ever say that? <laughs> well, Howard has looked so overmatched, not just in this game, but really for the first part of this season. So we'll see what Dan Worth and Matt Harvey decide to do here. Well, here's Utley's day coming in here on a slump. Off to a bad start, curveball down and in a home run, and then after that delay and that what we thought was a challenge, and it turned out not to be the first pitch fastball hitting going the other way. Professional hitter. So Utley has two RBIs tonight. He's got the tying run of third and two out. That's the pitcher Buchanan running. And let's see how Harvey approaches this at bat with Howard on deck. Mm. And he throws it behind him. Oh, that's a warning. And a warning is issued to Harvey and to both benches as Utley got hit. Harvey threw it behind him. And there's your retribution. That's um, that's the rebellious nature of Harvey. I'm thinking that Worthen said we're going to walk him and pitch to Howard. And he said, you know what? I don't feel like it. Did you see Harvey? This was uh, this was a we're not going to pitch around here. We're going to drill you. Well, I'm telling you, Dan Worthen did not come out and tell him to drill him. He came out to tell him to walk him on four pitches. Between the time he got from there to the bench, Harvey said, that's a free pass. I'll give him a free pass with a message. And you saw Utley's reaction. He had no problem. He had completely understood the situation. And he patted Darnell as he headed to first base. Harvey kept his eye on him just in case he made the quick left turn. So now it's Howard. With the tying and go-ahead runs on base, and Harvey's been able to overpower him all night. Ow. So this is good old-fashioned baseball, and I'm not condoning anything, but this is all very fine with me. It certainly got the crowd revved up. And they're gonna, chanting Harvey's name. They loved every minute of that. This is going to create some very bad blood between these two teams. It's going to make for a fantastic summer. It's been up twice, struck out both times. It's four for 26 to start the season. Only, only gets hit by 20 plus pitches a year. Kind of used to it. Now it fouls one away, and it's one and two. Well, it's all started with Wilmer Flores getting hit on the hand by David Buchanan, following in short order by Kadire, who had to leave the game. Getting hit on the head. Yalvis got nicked, maybe, in the third inning, and Utley got drilled here in the fifth. One and two to Ryan Howard. There goes Utley, and Howard takes up and in, and the Mets let Utley go. That pushes the go ahead run into scoring position. And yeah. stolen base for Utley, his first of the year. I do not like that. I do not like Just it. Just a couple of tosses I, over there. I do Keep him in shape. Do not like it at all. No defense on the left side of the infield. Nothing. 2 2 coming. Just got a piece of that fastball. Well, it's clear with. And with catcher's interference is called against Darno. Oh. And Darno is hot. Getting in the face of the home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez. And Darno's got to be careful here. Catcher's interference called against Darno. And Howard goes to first base. I can't tell from there and Howard right away 
It's almost like he hit the inside of the glove. The thumb. Look where the thumb is. It's hard to see. Hard to see, guys. Just like the entire evening. What a weird game this has been. I have to say, uh, Marquez was emphatic coming out of there and saying that it was a catcher's interference. That's not something you look to call. It's something you hear to call. Well, this game has had some entertainment. We saw Bob Garrett on the phone. He's talking with the Mets video guys. Catcher's interference, reviewable call. Uh, it's not oh, a reviewable Terry's call. Terry's been ejected. And you can uh, probably read lips and see that he's now going to get his money's worth after Alfonso Marquez has run him from a game. I, uh, another angle. Oh, boy. I didn't see it. It looks like the ball got the glove, not the bat. I didn't see it. Just a deflection of the glove. This is all from... You wouldn't give me a challenge. Guys getting hit. Manager's hot. So it's catcher's interference. It's, it's an air on Darno. No turn it back for Howard. And it loads the bases with two out for Carlos Ruiz in a one run game. Review at home, folks. I don't see it. There's no way. I don't see the interference at all. Not reviewable, by the way. No. Well, the ball got the glove. That didn't get the glove. So now Carlos Ruiz, bases loaded, two out. And Ruiz fouls it away. Ruiz has been up twice, grounded out both times. So <laughs> it has been anything but easy for Matt Harvey. He had a 4 1 lead, and he's now trying desperately to hang on to a one run lead. We've got 11 pages of the rule book done now. We've got about 40 to go. <laughs> Only the fifth inning. <laughs> oh, and one to Carlos Ruiz. And he takes a fastball for a strike. And that one crackles on the outside corner, and it's over two. Marquez has had a big strike zone key for both pitchers. That's a beautiful strike right there. Good as it gets. Knees and black. A double, a hit batsman, and the catcher's interference have loaded the bases. Oh, two. Curveball popped up. Who's going to get it? The captain takes charge. Side retire. Matt Harvey works out of a strange jam in the fifth inning and keeps the Mets in front halfway through. What's the second half going to bring? <laughs>
Well, Matt Harvey drilling Chase Utley, Travis Darno getting in the face of Alfonso Marquez after what looked like a bogus catcher's interference call. This has been quite a night. The Phantom. Phantom catcher's interference call. Well, the Mets still have a one run lead courtesy of this guy. Lucas Duda drilled a bases loaded double to drive in three in the second. Since then, though, David Buchanan has found his stride, retired seven in a row, but he just spent a long inning on the bases. So we'll see how that affects him, if at all. And he falls behind on Duda 2 0. Oh. Thing that saved him, Gary Buchanan. He was on third base for a long time doing nothing but standing. So full shift on against Duda, and he hits one off the end of the bat foul. Two and one. There's your JetBlue fifth inning recap. Matt Harvey has been anything but dominant tonight. He has struck out seven, but he's given up two home runs. Worked himself out of a big jam in the last half inning. Big shift on Lucas, much like Granderson, and he pulls one down the line. It's an extra base hit to the corner. Sizemore over to dig it out, and Duda strides into second with his second double of the night. Wants it away right down the pipe. Lucas makes him pay. Lucas swinging a very, very good bat. Eye on the ball. Beautiful balance. What about and Hitters turn on that right foot, Keith. Yep. And he's a Lucas is one of those guys. He's not a toe tapper. He's a he lifts that leg leg up in the air. So now Kirk Newenheis will bat for the first time. Took over for Michael Kadire after he was hit by a pitch, and he's fooled by the changeup. Nothing in one. Kirk looking for his first hit of the season. He's gone 0 for 4. He pinch ran and then stayed in the game and left and made a great defensive play. To Rob Odubel Herrera of an extra base hit. Now trying to pick up Duda from second with nobody out. Well, both these pitchers have had to work hard. In Harvey's case, he's thrown 85 pitches in five innings, and with the amount of stress, I wonder whether he's going to get another inning or not. There's nobody throwing right now, so that makes us suspect he will. Bottom half of the order coming up for him. Doing nice, pops it up. Galvis is calling. And the shortstop puts it away. One out. 88 if he hadn't drilled. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Newenheit's unable to advance the runner. And now it's Daniel Murphy who's 0 for 2. Fouled out to third, flat out to left. That's. Four runs, seven hits. The Phillies, three runs, five hits. We're in the fifth. Been throwing Murph away. Fouled out to third base weekly and also to left field weekly. Uh, I'll see if they stay away from Murph and let's see if Murph makes the adjustment. Now Buchanan behind him 2 0 with Darno on deck. And that curveball missed badly, and now Buchanan, who has not walked about it tonight, is behind 3 0. He walked four batters in three innings in his first start against the Red Sox. Tonight he's hit two guys, but no walks. It hasn't been a pretty affair tonight. It's been interesting, though. <laughs> Four pitch walk to Murphy, and now the Mets have two men on. 3 0 changeup. He didn't want it. He fell behind Murphy. He didn't want to deal with him. I'm blushing. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Pick up that rolling ball with lime green fingernails. <laughs> Blends in with the craft. Darno is 0 for 2, grounded to second, grounded to third. Well, Travis has been right in the middle of everything with 
hit batsman and catches interference. And he's got to settle himself down for a big at bat. He's hitless in his last 10 at bats. He's got Duda at second and Murphy at first with one out. Mr. Mark started to miss consistently high. Marquez is a low ball umpire. He doesn't call that high strike. He's consistent. David Buchanan out of Georgia State University, which made a splash in the NCAA tournament. Hit hard to have a whole base hit for Darno. Due to the third, he's being waved home. Revere doesn't have much of an arm, but he uncorks one on one hop, and due to is. Oh. He got back there. Ruiz missed the tag. Marquez made no call. And Duda got back to the plate before Ruiz could tag him out. Five to three, New York. The veteran Ruiz here. Oh, he kicked it. He touched the plate the first time. Come on. Get something right here. Gee, look at his back foot. Can't scrape it over the plate more than that. Obviously concentrating on the front foot. Watch the back foot. Come on. Oh, please. Jeez. Yeah, he touched. What is going on here? Well, wow. Sandberg's out there considering whether to challenge, and they're going to challenge. I'm not sure why they're going to challenge, because all it's going to show is that Duda hit the plate the first time. Except the, the umpire did not say he touched the plate first so is the challenge on the reach back to the plate he called no call which means he said he's saying to us he did not touch the plate is the call going to be challenged on the reback when Duda goes back to touch the plate but I think that the replay umpires on a situation like this can review the entire play okay all right so yes you know, so think about it this way. If they say that Ortiz, uh, Ruiz tagged Duda before he touched the plate, could the Mets then come out and say, you know what, we're not looking at that. We're looking at this. Watch the back foot as he goes over the plate. He can't scrape it across the plate more than that. But again, I, my understanding of these home plate challenges is that the replay officials should look at the entire play in other words if there was a question whether he touched the plate the question whether the plate was illegally blocked they could look at that entire thing so my assumption is that they can look at both the first touch of the plate and if necessary the second so that's the initial one and then Duda tries to get back to the plate because no call has been made and he realizes that and well, I don't know on the, the dive back and the dive back have confirmed safe. However, it is that they confirmed it. <laughs> they confirmed that Duda was safe. No one even stands new. They did it so quickly. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Play under review. Brought to you by Mazda. So Travis Darno drops in his seventh run of the year. Should put this game in a time capsule so people in 2025 can watch it. How not to play the game? Exactly. <laughs> or how not to officiate the game. Justin DeFreitas up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Mets now again with a two run lead. And Juan Lagares at the plane with two aboard. Lagares has singled and scored a run and grounded out one for two. Murphy now at second. Darno at first. And Lagares takes a strike. And Alfonso Marquez has had a lot of action tonight. Yeah, he's made two bad calls. Erroneous calls. So Juan is dropping his back shoulder if you're watching at home folks and he's getting under the ball right now. He's not got that level swing on that high pitch. He's a good high ball hitter. He's dropping that back shoulder. Oh two coming and the curveball not foul. By the way the Phillies of course using their challenge so that's the first official challenge of the game. That's right. So the Phillies are out of challenges. The Mets tried to challenge but were not allowed to so they still have theirs. You can write a novella about this game. Or everything that's gone on. Maybe a full length screenplay. 
slung toward the left field corner, but foul. And Harris with home run distance, but pulled it. Wilmer Flores waiting on deck. 82 pitches now for Buchanan. So lot loss of who Harvey is pacing. He's lost in all this stuff going on in this inning as Darno continues to drive in runs. It's his seventh RBI of the season. Buchanan ahead on Lagaris 0 and 2. And he hits right at the shortstop. Galvis. To Utley, and they turn the 6 4 3 double play to end the inning. But the Mets tack on a run on Darno's RBI hit through five. Harvey and the Mets up 5 3. Manhattan at night. Not too much traffic. I can know that that get you home in short order. Shoot, if it's one of the avenues, you might get the synchronized lights and be you know downtown before you know it. It's Times Square, wasn't it? Your People's United Bank starting pitchers. Neither one of them has had a flawless night. Matt Harvey's given up a couple of home runs, but he's got a lead as we start the sixth inning. Cody Ashey, who took one deep into the Pepsi porch his last time up. Leads off in the sixth. Ashy's first home run of the year. He's now hit in five straight games. Phillies three runs and five hits. The Mets five runs and eight hits. Two teams that have been having trouble scoring runs. Just a little off there. Well, notice Harvey staying away from Ashy. This at bat, the last at bat, Ashy turned on a fastball inside. Two changeups in a row here, both off the plate. Harvey's gone away from his curveball the last couple innings because it has not been as sharp. And he hasn't used the slider much all night. Another changeup. Wow. And he gets even on Ashy. That's pure hitter guessing, rightfully so, that he's going to get a fastball 2 1 from Harvey. Harvey pulls the chain. 2 2 on the way. Up and away in a full count. Harvey has struck out seven, but five of those came in the first two innings. There's nobody throwing in the Mets bullpen, but that's about to change. Buddy Carlisle heading down to the bullpen mound. Swing and a miss. He got him with the changeup. Matt Harvey's eighth strikeout of the night. 
Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams standing by for a game break brought to you by Honda. Real young pitching stars in the American League. Yeah, but for the grace of God, go I, right? Well, it's Grady Sizemore, and he pops one up on the left side. Flores out, Neuenheis in. And who's going to get it? Neuenheis, and they collide, and Neuenheis hangs on. Flores either didn't hear him or didn't want to give ground, but that's Neuenheis's ball. He's calling it off. Well, you, you like the aggressiveness of Flores. And he tried to get away, but it's too late there. Something you have to also deal with when you play on a good ball club, or tonight you're playing in front of a lot of fans, a lot more noise than you're usually going to hear. A little bit of everything in this way go. So Harvey trying to get through the sixth has two out and nobody on. He's only had one, one, two, three inning tonight. He faces Ben Revere and he takes a strike. By the way, talking about the Indians of Carlos Carrasco getting hit, completely coincidentally, the Indians picked up Jolie's Chassin today, who had been released by the Rockies. It may turn out to be a fortuitous move right. if Carrasco has to miss any time. Ball and a strike to Revere. Tony Carlisle continuing to throw. Buchanan, for the moment, is out on deck for the Phillies. Mm. Loves his change up this inning. It's the best pitch. Another one. Very interesting. Third time through the order. One two to Revere. This is low. Two and two. Good to see him pop Revere personally inside. Here pulled his base hit a fastball into right field in the third inning. Crack to right. Granderson moving back. Makes the catch. Side retire. Now well, Matt Harvey for the second straight start gets through six. Not quite as flawless as he was in D.C. But he leaves with the lead. Five to three, New York in the sixth at City Field. Wilma Flores leads off the home sixth inning and takes a strike from David Buchanan, who's still out there, giving up five runs and eight hits over five innings. 
Harvey is due up next. There's nobody out on deck at the moment. John Mayberry had come out into the on deck circle to pinch hit. But I would imagine that if Flores were to get on, maybe they'd leave Harvey in the bunt. Yeah, it, but he doesn't uh, look like he has any intention of doing that. So you have to have someone on. Someone in the on deck circle. It's one of the rules. Foul tip held by Ruiz and Flores is a strikeout victim, the third of the night for Buchanan. So uh, what, they were going to definitely pinch hit. Obviously, Ruben wasn't ready. Or they wanted to decide based on the result. No, Mayberry was ready, waiting there, and no one was on deck. So you can't wait and have both guys on the bench. One guy's got to be out there. Right. So Tejada is going to pinch it with one out and nobody on. We'll save Mayberry for a spot in case the yeah. Mets need runs late. It's only the sixth inning, and the Mets only have a four-man bench. Tejada got a start on Sunday in Atlanta and went 0 for 3. And Ruben swinging at a fastball, nothing at one. Well, the Mets are carrying only four on the bench so that they can carry eight relief pitchers. So far, the bullpen has done some fine work. And they're going to have to get nine outs tonight for Harvey to get a win. But there are also reinforcements on the way. Both Vic Black and Bobby Parnell began their rehab stints in Port St. Lucie tonight. It's Bob Garrett running the team with Terry Collins having been ejected. One it's, suit to say hot. It's both. hard. It's hard. Not many people can pull a Kevin Mitchell, come straight out of the locker room, get a hit. Both Parnell and Black threw an inning tonight for the St. Lucie Mets. Black gave up a home run. Parnell worked a scoreless inning. But the most important thing is they're both on the road back. Black coming back from shoulder weakness. Parnell from Tommy John surgery. Black probably ahead of Parnell. Maybe best guess 10 days for Black, a couple of weeks for Parnell. But right now, the guys who are in that bullpen have been getting the job done. They're saying you might have a little different bullpen in May. In the air to left. Pretty well hit. Revere back. It's over his head and off the cushion. Tejada heads for second. Dives in safely with a double. So Ruben Tejada's first hit of the year. A pinch hit double. Oh, good at bat for Ruben here. Two strikes. Oh, gets a backup slider inside. And for Ruben, that's his close to his best bolt. Nice at bat. Hartley will will lay down a hard tag on you. you better be prepared. Ninth hit of the night for the Mets, and now Granderson who has two of them. Oh, takes a change up down for ball one. Granderson single to left in the first, dribbled one up the first baseline for an infield hit in the second. He scored both times. Two for three on the night. Came into the night with only one hit for the season. So Granderson continues to get on base. Started the night with a 370 on base percentage. Jake Deakman, who was the only lefty in the Philly bullpen up, getting ready for Lucas Duda, who's two batters away. But at Carlisle looks like he'll pitch the seventh for the Mets. Buchanan behind on Granderson 2 and 0. And gets the change up in for a strike. And double by Tejada, the first pinch hit of the year for the Mets. They have been 0 for 7 from their pinch hitters before that. And now Buchanan falls behind Granderson 3 and 1. You know, it's interesting is with Sahada hitting for Matt Harvey because of the limited pitch count and how the game kind of runs today you're you don't get a chance to watch a Harvey Utley matchup one more time. They'll face each other plenty more though. Yeah they will. Ball four to Grant. 
Patterson. His major league leading 10th walk of the season. And he's on base for the third time tonight. Well, you don't have any right hander up, and it looks like they're going to make. Now, McC Bobby McClure, the pitching coach, is going to go talk to him, but you don't have a right hander up, and this Buchanan's throwing an awful lot of pitches. 96 now, but yeah. he'll stay in to face David Wright. Well, because of the injury to Kadir, see tomorrow night the Mets playing the Phillies starts at our action tomorrow at 6 p.m. on SNY. It's Jonathan Nice's start tomorrow night. Uh, I was thinking with the injury to Michael Kadir getting hit by a pitch, get three lefties in a row with Duda, Newenheis, and Murphy. Nice goes up against Jerome Williams, the well traveled right hander tomorrow. In the final game of the series, then the Marlins are in for four. Marlins leading in Atlanta tonight, but they have had just a mess of things. Miami mm. won at six on the year. They lost their best pitcher without Jose Fernandez, Henderson Alvarez. He's on the disabled list now. John Carlos Stan sitting a buck 30. Not a very good start for a team from whom much was expected. So here's Wright, is one for three on the night, looking to extend the Mets' lead. Two aboard and one out. Another big spot for David. on the plate. Well, David had a big opportunity in the second inning. Base is loaded one out and he popped up after a long battle against Buchanan. But Duda picked him up and ripped a double to drive in three on the very next pitch. And that's the biggest hit in this game. Mm. Right drives one to right center field. Herrera over in the gap and he gets there to make the catch. Tagging at second Tejada, he'll move to third. Oh, right hit that ball hard to right center. It's a big hangover. Line drive hit well. Good read by Ruben, tagging up. Pitching change for the Phillies with the left hand hitter coming up. Ryan Sandberg's going to make a double switch. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. 5 3 Mets in the sixth. We'll be right back. The second day in a row that the Thomas moment has been a beautiful skyline shot of the city. Nice uh, on the right of that Chrysler building. 
Ah, former Met Jeff Frank Cora is in in the double switch. He'll play right field and bat ninth. The new pitcher Jake Diekman will hit seventh. You know, with all the Phillies' problems, their bullpen has been very strong. Diekman last year had a very good season. 100 strikeouts. First time Phillies relievers had 100 strikeouts since 1983. Al Holland. He is a very hard thrower, but tends to be a little wild. Those 100 strikeouts came in just 71 innings alongside 35 walks. Duda faces him with first and third and two out. And it takes the fastball off the plate for ball one. Duda's already doubled twice tonight, drove in three with the first one in the second inning, and then scored after the second one in the fifth. Both went down the right field line. And Deakman quickly behind two and oh. Sean Gilmartin has joined Buddy Carlisle in the bullpen for the Mets. Well, they're giving Lucas a big left center field gap. 2 0 from Deakman, and he throws a slider and misses badly with it. Now it's 3 0. You've got Kirk Neuenheis waiting on deck. There's nobody up in the Phillies' bullpen, so the Mets could send up Mayberry for Neuenheis if they wanted to. I don't know if Terry would be inclined to do that in the sixth inning. He's already used one of his bench guys. He's only got two left. There's a strike, three and one. Well, first, dude has got to do something. And one of them is Wrecker, so that's the one of the disadvantages of having a short bench. David Buchanan leaving after five and two thirds, allowed nine hits, three runs so uh, five runs so far, responsible for the two on base. It goes and Duda takes ball four. And now the bases are loaded. And it looks like Newenheis will stay in to bat against the left hander. Nothing worse for a manager when you bring in a reliever and he walks his first batter. So Newenheis will bat for the second time in the game. Came in when Michael Kadire was hit on the hand by a pitch. Kadire had x rays on his left hand, they were negative. He's got a contusion. Tejada at third, Granderson at second, and Duda at first with two down. Make Deakman throw strikes. He's a guy that can lose the strike zone for a while. And Newton Heights takes a fastball at 98 miles an hour for a strike. Garen running the club. Terry Collins ejected for the first time this year. And Newenheis with a check swing fouls off the slider and it's 0 2. Dustin McGowan up in the Phillies bullpen. So a tough spot here for Newenheis behind 0 2 against a very tough left hander. Just missed. Can't get a ball two. more down the middle than that pitch. You put it on a tee, it wouldn't be more the middle. Not calling the high strike at all, and he's been consistent with it, so I don't have an issue. Low ball umpire, Marquez. One and two to New and Heiss. And Kirk takes it inside, two and two. It's trailed one nothing, led four to one. Phillies cut it to four to three. Mets added a run on Darno's hit in the fifth. The Mets trying to add to this lead with the bases loaded, two down in the sixth. Two two from Diekman. Strike three call, fastball right down the middle to get Newenheis and end the inning. So the Mets strand three. They've left eight tonight. Matt Harvey done after six. Buddy Carlisle coming in to protect a two run lead.
Murphy is the 29th Met to wear number 33. Who do you got? Who wore the first? I got no idea. I will guess though. Let me. Let me say Roger Craig. Oh, good nice. one. Oh, so there was nobody right. in 1962 wearing right. 33. Good, good question. <laughs> See, I well, never had a chance. Possible <laughs> question. <laughs> Come on. Buddy Carlisle on in relief for the Mets. Jeff Francoeur, the former Met, will lead off. Came in in the double switch. Franchi spent most of last year in the minor leagues in El Paso, not only swinging the bat, but doing some pitching. He was in eight games. He did okay. Always had the strong arm. Flies one out to left field. And New and Heist waits for it to come down. Frank Corr retired one away. Frank Corr played for the Mets parts of 2009, 2010. He's still only 31 years old. He's a delight to be around. Yeah. Here's a Dubell Herrera moved up to the leadoff spot tonight. He's got 0 for 3, but has hit a couple of balls well. Including one where Neuenheis robbed him going toward the left field corner in the third. Keith in our day was uh, mattress head. Barry Lyons wore that number. Mm -hmm. That I could have told. You. Yeah. <laughs> mattress. <laughs> Pereira trying to butt his way on. It's a foul ball. Tuesday night baseball on SNY is brought to you by Verizon. Don't miss a moment of Mets baseball with Fios Quantum, the fastest and most reliable internet, only from Verizon. Well, he's been out all evening, and you're just joining us. You've missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin McGowan is up in the Phillies bullpen. You've missed Matt Harvey's first City Field start in nearly 600 days. Didn't pitch all that well, but he left with the lead. Six innings, three runs, five hits, no walks, eight strikeouts, two home runs. You miss two Mets being hit by pitches. One of them, Michael Goddard, forced to leave the game. You missed Harvey retaliating by hitting Chase Utley in the back and both benches being worn. You missed a, um, a replay that the Mets tried to challenge and were not able to. You missed a catcher's interference call, which was bogus and led to. Terry Collins being ejected. You missed Ryan Sandberg challenging a play that didn't go his way. Play at the plate. It's had everything. And we've seen Herrera the last two days following pitches off. We're only two thirds of the way through. Okay, Montero, Sean Gilmartin up in the Mets bullpen under the watchful live Ricky bonus. Chase Utley's been in the middle of everything a home run, an RBI single, and he got. Hit by that pitch by Harvey. And Herrera goes down to the changeup. A rare off speed pitch from Buddy Carlisle for the second out. Well, Carlisle always goes after hitters. This is nice. That's a nice little weapon for Buddy to have against left hand hitters. A little sinking change out of the strike zone completely fools Herrera. So two out and nobody on. Now Freddie Galvis, who is 0 for 2. Galvis was hit by a pitch in the third inning. That was the play that the Mets tried to challenge, but they were too late. And we had a probably from start to finish about a seven minute delay while they decided that the Mets couldn't challenge. Jerry's familiar working out with that foam roller. Getting ready for a possible save chance in the ninth. You guys foam roller guys. Yeah, I, I, I use it. Cool. Not on my back though. He was doing the back thing. I don't, I don't know how that works. Takes the knots out of your legs. It really works, right? I mean, I, I know that the first time I ever saw one Ichiro was using it. He brought it over from. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. It's painful. It's painful, but it's but it's good. For, it's good for you, but. But cod liver oil. It's good for you. Oh. <laughs> Chase Utley waiting on deck. Gil Martin ready in the bullpen if need be. Carlisle's retired the first two. And Galvis stays alive. Carlisle mixing up a little slider in there. Look at a little wrinkle. There you go, buddy. The Phillies' last base runner came on that controversial catcher's interference in the fifth inning when Ryan Howard reached base. Since then, Harvey and Carlisle have 
combined to retire six in a row. One two. Slap foul. And Carlisle has a little quick pitch in him also. And the best year of his career last year at age 36. And then on opening day this year, quite unexpectedly, called upon to get his first major league save at age 37. And they say some fastballs have late life. Buddy Carlisle's career has late life. <laughs> Motion's pretty simple. He starts from the stretch, pitches from the stretch all the time. That's his changeup. And that crossover and follows through to the right side towards first base. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Galvis past the mound. Murphy on the backhand sets and fires. Side retire. One, two, three inning for Buddy Carlisle as the Mets bullpen continues to shine. Seventh inning stretch time, 5 3 New York. Plus, they'll get you ready for tomorrow's Mets Phillies finale on Loudmouth tomorrow at 5:30, only on SNY. There's Kevin James, who is here tonight promoting his new movie. Paul Blart, two, Mall Cop. Do you see one? No. The Segway plays a big role. I'll have to check it out. Dustin McGowan, the former Toronto Blue Jay, comes on to pitch for the Phillies in the home seven. And Murphy cracks one deep to the gap in right center toward the new shorter fence, and it's out of here! Daniel Murphy, the first to take advantage of the new dimensions, his first home run of the season, and the Mets now have a three run lead. Well, they said they moved the fences in for Granderson and Wright and Duda. They didn't mention Murph. <laughs> First ball, fastball heading. How refreshing. Right down the pipe and see you later. So it's now six to three New York. Travis Darno the batter and he swings at the first pitch fastball and fouls it back. That Mets home run means two thousand dollars for an NYC community partner courtesy of City. Darno drove in a run with a base at his last time up.
Dustin McGowan in the early years of his career looked like he might have a pretty successful career as a starter but he's had so many medical issues over the last half dozen years. He really has he was uh, out of spring training in 2014 was going to be the fifth starter for the Blue Jays but suffered some injuries during the season signed with the Dodgers in spring training this year but was let go and picked up by the Philadelphia Phillies. So he signed him right before opening day. And he's now making his third appearance. And Murphy greeted him rudely. One two to Darno, and he hits one in the air to deep left field. Back goes Revere onto the warning track. It's over his head and short hops the wall. Darno hits for second and dives in safely with a double. Back to back extra base hits for the Mets to start the home seventh. Fastball down and in turns and Darno continues to swing the bat well. Second hit of the night. And we'll take a look at the Merster here. Don't throw it. I told you. <laughs> Pull it out of here. Well that's how the dimensions have changed from 2009 to 2011 to now. And we're fitted right between the yellow and orange versions of right center field. <laughs> Here's Ligaris who's one for three on the night. And he takes it at the knees for a strike. For Murphy his first home run since August 4th of last year against Tim Hudson of the Giants. Once had one hit he could use a two hit game. Big time. That's with their most productive offensive game thus far. They had six runs and ten hits in the last game in Washington. They've got six runs and eleven hits tonight. McGowan, the third Phillies pitcher of the night. And he misses with the slider, one and two. David Buchanan went five and two thirds, allowed five runs and nine hits. Hung in there pretty well, considering it looked like he'd be out of the game very early. Jake Diekman struck out New and Heist to get out of a jam in the sixth, and now McGowan with nobody up behind him. Wilmer Flores, the on deck batter. One two coming to Ligaris, and he gets him swinging with a fastball. That's the first out of the inning. Boy, it's been a struggle for Juan getting untracked here early in the season. Out of the strike zone, chased a little cutter. That's the fifth inning and also the seventh inning now, the Mets have had a chance to do some situational hitting. Get him over, get him in. It's not worked out. Now it's Flores is 0 for 2, hit by a pitch and scored a run back in the second. Ooh, it was a weak swing at that. Wow. It's like a sweep. Dusting the floor there. We got fooled completely. John Mayberry out on deck to pinch hit. Well, the Mets coming into tonight had only eight extra base hits in their first seven games. They have five extra base hits tonight. Hmm. The biggest Gowan, one belongs to Duda. Gowan's still throwing hard, 94 miles an hour on that fastball, although it was wide. And it's just been a matter of keeping his shoulder healthy. Had rotator cuff issues for year upon year and a lot of false starts trying to come back. Last year was really a comeback season for him in that they moved him to the bullpen and he was able to pitch in 55 games. The swell. Something's happening at City Field I haven't seen since the big Shay. Surfs up. <laughs> right, Keith? Yep. Now Flores is a good count to work with. Three one for McGowan. 
From a 3 1 slider. Wilmer has just been on the breaking ball, just trying to pull it instead of going the other way. He's out in front. He's got to think and over oh, the second some, baseman's some head. Idiot just threw a ball on the field. Really? Yeah. That's bad. I've never seen that. Could hurt somebody. Well, the way I figure it with the wave is that the vast majority of these people came here to see Matt Harvey tonight, and Harvey's out of the game. They've got to find some other way of entertaining themselves. You got two hours with Harv, then he's done. <laughs> Elvis left the building. 3 2 to Flores. And he fouls off the fastball. I will say this, though everybody has stayed. That's won their home opener yesterday. It was. Uh, It was a, a tense affair, but not as action filled as what we've had tonight. <laughs> Three, two. And Flores lays off the slider and takes ball four. Turned into a pretty good turn at bat for Flores, and the Mets have two men on. It's the best online source for Mets information with a constant flow of Mets news and opinion. Featuring game breakdown, special features, and player profiles, Mets blog presented by City, part of the SNY TV. On SNY.TV blog network. Now, John Mayberry will pinch it for the pitcher, Carlisle. Well, it's the final score at Fenway Park. The Nats lose another one to fall to two and six. They've had all sorts of defensive problems. Don't know how that went tonight, but two. Desmond made two more errors yesterday, if I'm correct, right? And they had two pop ups drop between fielders. Yeah. They let Mookie Betts steal third because it was unguarded after he stole second. They're a mess right now. But Desmond, uh, I know it's early, and it's re but if, if you do the math, he's on a pace to make a 115 errors. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. not going to make it to 115, <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, Mayberry, the former Philly, getting to face his old team for the first time. And takes the slider off the plate from McGowan, one and one. Darno at second, Flores at first with one out. Mayberry never got untracked in a Phillies uniform. He was a first round draft pick by Texas. But came to the big leagues with the Phillies. It was there parts of six years before they traded him to Toronto last summer? Ground ball back to McGowan. He's able to snag it. Out oh. in second. The relay by Utley, not in time. Well, he threw a lollipop to second base. <laughs> and thus, they didn't turn the two. I think he caught this. Well, I, thought, I was going to say he caught it in his bare hand, but he didn't. Utley barely stayed on the bag there long enough to get the force. Oh, a great change of pace he threw him. Not a reviewable play anyway, because you could call it a neighborhood play. So now first and third and two out. And Granderson has been on base three times, two singles and a walk. He scored two runs. There are no at third, Mayberry at first. And he lines one to right field, but right at Frank Cor, who makes the catch to end the inning. Mets settle for one run in that seventh. Daniel Murphy taking advantage of the new dimensions with his first home run of the year. First pitch thrown by Dustin McGowan over the new fence in front of the old one. Mets lead 6 3 going to the eighth.
will get his third appearance. Well, like the uh, left-hander Jerry Blevins, who is not available for this evening's game, so Gil Martin is going to play a big role. But like Blevins, he has been unblemished so far. It'll be Utley, Howard, and Ruiz, three, four, and five, in the Phillies' batting order. So Gil Martin will get at least the first two of them. Utley's had an interesting night. He homered off Matt Harvey in the first. After a delay, he drove in a run with a base hit in the third, and then Harvey drilled him in the rear in the fifth. Taken for a strike. Rafael Montero staying busy. I like this young man right here. I think he's got a bright future. Gil Martin's faced seven batters in the big leagues and retired all seven. He had just two hits this season before tonight. He's two for two in this game. Buddy Carlisle worked a one, two, three, seventh behind Matt Harvey. Now Gil Martin in the eighth. And Utley hits another one deep. Back goes Granderson onto the track looking up, and Utley has a two home run night. So Utley breaking out big time tonight. His second home run of the night, his third RBI, and he cuts the Met lead to six to four after being hit by a pitch. So Utley, the first man to reach base in the big leagues against Sean Gilmartin, and he circles him. Fastball, look how short and compact he is. Bell tie fastball, inner half. Beautiful swing. Level, folks. Curveball, check swing, tapper off Howard's back. And Gilmartin throws him out. No way. For Chase Utley, by the way, that's his 11th home run at City Field. The only player, only opposition player has hit more, Adam LaRoche, who has 13. Did you see he's talking right now to Ashley about his breaking ball, but Ashley's not going to get a chance to, to face him. It's going to be Rafael Montero to face Ruiz and then Ashley here in the eighth. Mets up six to four as Montero makes his way in. We'll be right back to City Field. Jane Green. Such is interesting to see if Fonzo Marquez going out there and talking to Montero. Usually it's to let the pitcher know he can blow in his hands. Mm. Temperature in the 50s. Carlos Ruiz, first man up for Montero with one out and nobody on. And he 
takes a slider off the plate for ball one. Good call. I, pred I predicted that. Fascinating. <laughs> Ronnie's uh, sometimes folks shows real signs of genius. <laughs> well, there was so much conversation after Montero's last outing in Atlanta about the fact that he threw 35 straight fastballs. David Wright throws out Ruiz for the second out. It was almost a lead pipe cinch that he wouldn't start with a fastball. Thank God I'm not a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> so two out and nobody on and now Ashy. And I suspect we'll see a change up or two to Ashy in this spot. Montero's got a really good change up. He has. A, I mean I, I always think that's. Well his first his best pitch is his fastball absolutely placement. But his best. Off speed pitch is his change up. Secret called here for. By Darno. This is a huge hitter. Ashy's been hitting the ball well the last two days. They got some home run power on deck. Darren Ruff out on deck to pinch hit. Well, there's your changeup. <laughs> so now he's thrown all three pitches. Now yeah. he's, well, I guess he and Darno are in the clear as far as pitch selection. The one thing you can say, though, is that. In Atlanta, he threw half dozen of those two seam fastballs that he will throw against the lefties. That one right there misses its mark. Ashy homered into the Pepsi porch back in the fourth. One of three Philadelphia home runs. The other two belong to Chase Utley tonight. Mm. And a fastball for a strike to a two. We made the call, Keith Marquez. We'll give you that low strike yep. right in the knees. That borderline knee, that's a strike. I think that's a strike. That's my feeling. That's a good pitch to hit. All the analysis has shown that the strike zone has expanded downward over the last half dozen years. That the umpires are calling that low strike more than ever. Three and two to Ashy with two out and nobody on. And he reaches for that and fouls it off. Well, when Raphael gets to the point where he can throw that good change of three two to the lefties, then he has made a great evolution as a pitcher. So young, not a lot of experience, but that's where he's headed. What was the change up there? Just up. Justin DeFreitas up in the Phillies bullpen with the pitcher spot on deck. Phillies four runs, six hits. The Mets six runs and 11 hits. Eight pitch of the at bat coming from Montero to Ashy. And he walked him. So now the time run will come to bat. In a 6 4 game, and Darren Ruff will be up to pinch hit. First, we'll check in in the studio with Doug Williams for another game break. It's a chilly night in Boston. Uh, yeah, a little chilly. Petey's back. <laughs> Well, here is Ruff, who's just one for 13 to start the season. The one, though, was a home run. He's got big power. Tying run at the plate in a 6 4 game. And Ruff takes a strike. There are numerous Philly fans screaming that Ruff should be playing over Ryan Howard. But it's hard to bench a $60 million player. The center field scoreboard just cleared the line score. I think we're still in the first inning oh. according to the scoreboard. We're oh, we're starting over. <laughs> no. Hey, everything else has happened in this game. Why don't we do that? I know. It's like know. A, it's like a double header. Yeah. <laughs> Ashy at first and two out. And Ruff takes it low. Two and one. Swing the infield and the outfield around to the left against Ruff. Where 
up at a fastball, two and two. Luis Garcia joins Justin DeFreitas in the Phillies bullpen. Garcia on the way. Montero trying to put this inning to bed. Two and two to Darren Ruff. And still going. Then Revere would be next. Ruff's a good fastball hitter. You have a couple of ways to counter that. If Montero can do this, that changeup away is a great pitch. He's seen everything hard away. He's expecting something hard away. Don't give it to him. 2 2. And he gets tied up. Did he go? He went around strike three. Oh, wow. Dan Bellino punches on Ruff. Montero with a strikeout to end the inning. Tied him up in a knot with that sinker. To the bottom of the eighth, 6 4 New York. Masters in sports business by State Farm. Today's State Farm agent of the game is John Garfinkel of Brooklyn, New York. Contact John at johngarfinkel.com. And by Subway restaurants, get any foot long for six dollars or less. April only. Subway. Eat fresh. Right-hander Justin DeFreitas takes over the pitching for the Phillies. Had a good year for them last year. See that ERA now, but his ERA was around that mark last season in 54 games. I was completely wrong before guys I said that when Marquez the umpire home plate umpire went out to talk to Montero I said maybe breathing in his hands blowing in his hands certainly wasn't the case he also went to Defreitas, which tells me he's just saying you know the warnings are out for both clubs so just want you to know that there were warnings issued to both benches after Utley was hit by Harvey in the fifth inning which was the fourth hit batsman of the game Jerry's familiar getting ready for the save chance in the ninth inning. That's trying to get him some more breathing room. Right due to and new and high zone against DeFreitas. Two and zero to David. And he bounces one foul. Mets box score presented by Subway. Most productive night of the year for the Mets so far. Lucas Duda, couple of doubles, has driven in three. Daniel Murphy with his first home run of the year. A couple of hits for Travis Darno who's driven on a run. Curtis Granderson's been on base three times, scored two runs. Wright is one for four. Mm.
Well, David's shoulder certainly looks fine and healthy. He's been taking healthy cuts. Last time up, lined out to Herrera in right center. Fred is the fourth Philly pitcher of the night. Right fouls it away. Looking ahead to the ninth inning, the Phillies will have eight, nine, and one of the order. That's Revere, Frank Cor, and Herrera do up against Familia. After Rafael Montero got two outs in the eighth. That bullpen has given up a run tonight. That's been a rarity. Oddly hitting his home run against Sean Gilmartin. And right lights one into left center field falling fast Revere has to play it on a hop and right has his second hit of the night. And the Mets get the leadoff man on the home eighth. Back up slider. David stays in just muscles it out muscles it out there and if that ball would have broken a little more away it might have been something he could drive. So now Judah, who's had a big night, couple of doubles, three RBIs, a walk. And they put the full shift on against Lucas. Daring him to lay one down. This is the shift that was on. You were talking about Mookie Betts, who stole second for the Red Sox last night and then went straight to third. Proceeded on with no national covered third base. Well, the Mets. Like everybody else in this National League East went into the season figuring they'd have to chase the Nats and that may wind up being the case but with Washington off to a two and six start it provides an opportunity to work ahead of Washington in the standings at least for a while. There's a strike to do to the Nats are starting to get hold they got Jason Worth back yesterday they should have Denard span back soon. They but, need they need W's. But their defense has just been horrendous. Yeah. On the inside corner. Nothing in two. Kirk Neuenheis is on deck. Neuenheis took over from Michael Kadire, who got hit on the hand back in the second inning. Now Miami trying for just their second win in eight games. They finally got the bats going there. O2 from DeFreitas and Duda smacks one foul the other way. Twenty seven year old Justin DeFreitas. Deals 0 and 2 to Duda. And the change of misses 1 and 2. Well, the Freitas talented in his own right, but certainly a different at bat for Duda, Neuenheis, and others from the left side than they had against Diekman. Duda was able to coax a walk from Diekman his last time up. By the way, Keith mentioned the Marlin bats breaking out tonight. John Carl Stanton a win of the day hitting 130, three for three, four runs batted in. No bombs? Not yet. Okay. Right at first and nobody out. Mets up 6 4 in the eighth. Just off the plate. Three and oh two. boy, you've been calling that all day, Carlos Ruiz is saying. You let him know too. You've been calling that a strike all day. Now that's borderline. Mm. I and might have judged it outside. I bet you Larry Bow is hooting at him from the back. <laughs> Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Duda. 
Wright is running, and Duda takes strike three. The throw to second. Galvis with the tag, and Davis steals the base. And the Phillies make sure to cover third. <laughs> So right as the second stolen base of the year as Duda goes down looking Galvis getting there late No excuse for not getting there on time and a phantom tag and David came off the base He's got to get there. He's playing up the middle That's one thing I see in today's game Keith is that many of the infielders will feel that ball a foot two foot in front of the bag the uh, Mets trainer Ray Ramirez is going to come out and check on David who came up rather awkwardly after that slide. Remember he hurt his himself sliding against Milwaukee last season. That was a head first slide. Comes off the bag keep the tag on him he's out. Oh did he tweak his right knee. Kind of coming off that bag. Hey, when you start getting a little older, that body is not as sturdy. Well, David staying in. He's in scoring position with one out. He was new in heights up for the third time. He's popped up and struck out in his first two at bats. Came up with a runner in scoring position each time. He's got another one now. Mets have had a host of opportunities with runners in scoring position tonight. Four for 17. Plenty of chances to tack on and have gone by the wayside. Newenheis trying to cash one here. Bob Guerin running the team with Terry Collins having been ejected back in the fifth inning. And Newenheis fooled on the changeup. One and one. Mm -hmm. Galvis keeps sneaking behind right at second base. One and two to New and Heist. Second and one out, one and two to New and Heiss. And that misses two and two. Well, the Detroit Tigers finally lost a game yesterday, but they bounced back and won tonight, beating the Pirates 2 0. Shane Green, the former Yankee, eight scoreless innings for Detroit. Detroit started their season with two shutouts to begin. It's the first time in Tigers history. And the unbeaten team, the Kansas City Royals. Newen has tried to hold. They check at third. No swing, says Tom Holly at three and two. The Royals are off tonight. The Royals are seven and zero, oh and they've won every game by two or more runs. That hadn't happened in a hundred years. They're all sitting the ball out of the ballpark, yeah. just like they did in the postseason. Ten home runs already. The, the team that was dead last in the majors in home runs last year. David's coming and, off. Uh, yeah, David. Whatever it was that was bothering him, he is. Uh, he's coming out. So the Mets who lost Michael Kadire to a bruised hand earlier in the game now lose David Wright on this slide into second base. He's walking funny. Did you notice that? Yes. Something a little on his right leg. But well, they went down very quickly on those steps. And here's the slide. Did he jam his hand into the ground, that left hand? Was that part of the issue too? No, I think it's right here. See that left leg? See how it kind of folds underneath him? Mm -hmm. so, who knows? Well, the Mets only have one bench player, and that's Anthony Wrecker. So either Wrecker or a pitcher is going to have to run. And it is going to be Wrecker running for right. Well, certainly having Kadire and Wright both come off the field is troubling for the Mets. How is the defense going to configure here? Well, that's a really good question. It is a who, very good question. Who can play third? Well, you can move. Hmm. I got to think about I, this. I guess you could move <laughs> Murphy, Murphy to third. third, but then who plays second? Yeah. 
it's got to be uh, it's got to be record a third. I would or think. Darno, you can move Darno into the field, have him play second base. More athletic. Or I mean, we once saw Gary Carter play third. Line drive to center, and Herrera right in front of it makes the grab. Record is not going to go anywhere. And that's the second out. This is a bizarre game. It's been a wacko game, no question about it. The Mets just hoping that they come out with a victory. And but I Red Lake pop right, up. right there, and then when he comes down on it, oh, that's an awkward on the knee. Yeah, it's a knee. Oh, may, I'm speculating. Now they're going to walk Murphy intentionally. Murph Homer his last time up, so they'll get bring up the right hand batter in Darno. Well, somebody's going to have to play significantly out of position in the ninth inning. You could play one of your catchers at third base. You could move Murphy to third and have one of them play second base. You could have Duda move over and play second base. I don't think that's going to happen. Third base? Can yeah. Duda play third? I mean, Lagaris is their best infielder. Yeah, but he's also their best outfielder. I don't think you want to mess that up. This is just bizarre. So somebody's going to have to play out of position, either at third or at second. Second so. base is too critical to have someone that's never. Return a double play. It's, it's, it's a what a two run ball game. I mean, if Kadire were still in, you could move him to second because he's played there before. But none of these guys we're talking about has has played these positions. But whoever it is, has got the inexperience has to go to third base. Yeah. Okay. And especially yeah. in a Philly lineup that's laden with left hand hitter. There you go. So that makes certainly makes sense. Wow. Well, it's going to be an interesting finish, isn't it? It's been a a fascinating night. And we're not done yet. Mets would love to tack on here. They've left so many runners stranded in this game. Darno is two for four. He's driven in a run. And he takes a slider for a strike. You know, and it's not like this is ten to four. This is six to four. Mm -hmm. You end up with an extra inning game. Uh, this is the result of a four-man bench. You can get away with it until you can't. Well, the Mets have to go to their bench early when Kadire left in the second inning. That brought Neuenheis in. They used Tejada and Mayberry as pinch hitters, and they might have used Mayberry earlier in a spot where he could have batted for Neuenheis with the bases loaded against the lefty, but they couldn't do that because of the short bench. And now with Wright going out because of injury, they are very much shorthanded. One and one to Darno. And he takes one of the dirt. You got to keep one. Wrecker on the field in case it don't, something happens to Darno. Well, you have no choice. I know. Because well, I mean, other, than, other than if you cho chose uh, to put a pitcher? channel your inner Stetson. Oh, put DeGrom out there. <laughs> That's a possibility. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. I don't know if they risk that. No. <laughs> two out and two on. And Darno rips one foul. Two and two. Coming up tonight, Geico Sports Night, Chris Carlin in the chair, and of course, he's auditioning for Paul Blart, Mall Cop 3. Oh, he would look great on a segue. Perfect, though. NHL playoffs coming up. Lots for Chris to talk about, including this game. Oh, Kevin James has made it all the way into the bottom of the eighth. King of Queens for tonight. Where's his segue? Two on, two out, two and two to Darno and a half swing, and he went around strike three. Side retired. Jerry's Familia will come on for the save, and who's going to play third base? Who's we'll find on out in a moment? Who's on first?
as Anthony Recker for the first time in his professional career is going to play third base. Never played there in the minors, played a few games in left field. But you've got Recker at third base, and you've got Jerry Familia on to try and get the save. So it puts Ben Revere with the Phillies two runs down. It puts him in a perfect opportunity to lay one down on that left side of the infield and make Recker or Familia make a play. I think if you're Recker, you got to come in all the way, come in three, four more steps, and just take the play away from Revere. Gary, I kind of remember a catcher playing third base a few years ago for the Mets. Well, that was Gary Carter, and you charged pretty hard from first base in that game, if I recall. We turned a double play, did we not? You did. <laughs> It was against the Reds when Ray Knight and Eric Davis got in that fight and left you guys shorthanded. I mean, you've got to attempt to bunt here. I mean, if, if, so. if you have an advanced scout at all, you've got to attempt to bunt. I here. mean, you might do that even with David Wright at third base because of Familia's trouble throwing to bases. Well, he's got to take a strike first. But he grounds one to do oh. makes a terrific play, and that's the first down. Wrong corner for Ben Revere. Duda with a beautiful play and one away. Well, Lucas has got good hands. He's got to play in a little for the bunt. Very nice backhand. I'd just like to know who's in charge of this game when you're down by two and you just face the ball from the pitcher. I mean, don't you take a pitch, try to get on base? I mean, come on. Well, now Wrecker's going to have to play deep at third base because you got Jeff Frank Cora, right hand pull hitter at the plate. Frank Cora's second at bat, flat out to left his first trip after coming into the double switch. And Frank Cora drives one deep left field, headed toward the wall, and that is gone. Jeff Frank Cora returns to City Field and hits his second home run of the year, and this is now a one run ball game. Well, Lucas Duda with a save. This game could have very easily been tied. Well, Jerry's familiar apparently didn't see the scouting report on Jeff Francoeur and the fact that he never takes a pitch. I and mean, there's been a lot of scouting reports lacking in this ninth inning. Frenchie swings as soon as you break your arm. She's ready to go. He likes the ball middle end too. This is right down Broadway and up. So it's now a six to five med lead. Right there, right down Broadway, belt high. Odubel Herrera is 0 for 4, trying to butt his way on, and he misses nothing in one. We got the word on David Wright, a right hamstring pull. Not good news. So David, who had to fight back from shoulder problems last year and played through it, now has a hamstring issue to deal with. Didn't he tweak the hamstring, uh, Garrick? Was it not? Remember in Miami when he kind of tweaked it? Was it two years ago, one year ago? I wonder if it's the same way. Herrera tried to bunt the first pitch. Wrecker playing in. Swing and a miss. Keith, you're right. Remember, he tweaked the hamstring. He tried to play easy on right. it. Right. And then he tried to beat an infield hit out and blew it out. I wonder if it's, if it's the same if it's the same hammy. Well, he tried to stay in this time, but walked off the field after a couple of pitches. Now Familia ahead on Herrera with Galvis on deck. Quick pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. 98 mile an hour blazer from Familia. Two down. Well, the quick pitch worked the other day against Johnny Gomes, and it works again today. Both result in a strikeout. He's trying to get ready to go, and here it comes, son. And did not stop at the belt. Kind of a quick pitch a little bit there. So now the Phillies down to their final out, but Chase Utley is looming on deck. And Utley's already hit two home runs tonight. So a huge batter for Familia as he takes on Freddie Galvis, trying to keep Utley from coming to the plate again. Again, the threat of the bunts here with Galvis. Record creeping in from third, and Galvis bluffing bunt takes a fastball for a strike. Galvis 0 for 3 tonight. What a game this has been. Oh, gosh. One of the stranger ones we've seen in a while. Wrecker, first game ever at third. And Galvis now in a two strike hole. 
Well, if you're a purist, this is a game to forget, but it has had a little bit of everything. Phillies down to their final strike. A little bit high. Again, familiar with the quick pitch, the Latroy, as we call it. Just stand loose. One and two to Freddie Galvis. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Familiar responds with back to back strikeouts after the Frank Cora home run. And a game that featured four hit batsmen, a catcher's interference, challenges, a manager ejected. The Mets hang on to win it. Matt Harvey gets the victory, and the Mets win six to five. I don't think I've seen a game any crazier than this with so many things happen that Gary uh, just mentioned on Matt Harvey Day. Strikes out the first two batters of the game and Chase Utley takes them deep on a curveball. But one of those games, Harvey will get the win, gave up three runs in six innings with eight punch outs. And also, you got to remember two key defensive plays by the Mets. Kadire gets hit, leaves the game. New one Heist comes in the game in the third inning is in left field makes a terrific play off the off a ball down the left field line the, the Utley got a base hit that could have been a big inning for the Phillies and then in the ninth inning Duda makes a beautiful backhand off the bat of Revere and followed by a home run by Fran Franco that would have tied the ball if he doesn't make the play so defense comes out very brightly for the Mets game summary presented by Verizon the Phillies hit four home runs tonight two for Utley but the Mets pitchers struck out 12 Harvey gets the win right and Kadire leave with injuries record winds up at third base what a game Mets win 6 5 and familiar saves a game for the third straight day. For every Mets win, the Mets Foundation is proud to contribute $2,500 to the Cats Women's Hospital and the Cats Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthShoreLIJ.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $12,500. Mets win their third in a row, and we go down to the field and Steve Gelb. Steve? Thank you, Gary. Travis? Bit of a weird game tonight. How would you describe these last nine innings? High energy, a uh, lot of fun, and a lot of excitement because all you guys out there. Second straight day where these fans and this place has been electric. How much fun is that to play in front of? There's nothing better to play for than the city of New York, and uh, with all these fans here, it, it makes it more exciting than ever. Obviously, part of the crazy night that was tonight, a lot of bizarre plays, including that catcher's interference. What were your thoughts on that play? Uh, I didn't think I had catcher's interference, and the emotions got the best of me. Um, you know, but I had, to, I had to keep my composure and stay in the game because we were low on players. So uh, I have to thank David for making sure to, to remind me that. Travis, you also came out with a big at bat right after that. You said your emotions got the best of you. How difficult was it to calm down, gain your composure for that big at bat? I just had to take a deep breath and, and uh, just realize it's baseball and just have fun. What did you see out of Harvey tonight? Uh, someone who's really excited and happy to be back in this city. Competitive. Oh, yeah, hands down. Travis, appreciate it. Congrats on the win. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Care? All right. Thanks, Steve. And thanks, Travis. A wild night at City Field. The dark night returned to Flushing, and everything else happened. Mets win it <laughs> 6-5. to five. We'll come back with more from City Field in a moment.